Okay, so we were, hello, first of all, from the Rock of Light, Ellis, uh, to all of the people, whether you're aware of that or not. Um, we're just talking about trusts and um, and these different rabbit holes. So we're, people are saying, right, okay, well, we're coming out the rabbit hole or I've been in the rabbit hole for four years, 10 years, 20 years, whatever. And that's what you've got to imagine the um, ecclesiastical system is one big rabbit hole. Inside there, you've got uh, postmaster general, uh, syntax, uh, grammar, uh, glosses, this glossary, black laws dictionary, you've got all sorts of Merriam-Webster's, got UCC code, you've got all of those uh, fictional things that have been defined by man. And to try to de define what is, is. Um, one thing that really helps people in this, if you think of the words that actually we use, such as Catholic. Catholic key is universal in Greek. When you, when you um, think about what it is that's actually going on, is the Vatican have got you prosecuting yourself because you're actually laying a claim uh, which creates a fraud against universal law. So the irony is they're upholding universal law by prosecuting you. Yes, the system and the warren and the, the rabbit holes are there for you to jump in and say, oh, this is my jurisdiction and here I am inside here. Uh, give, me my, give me my rights um, according to this hole. So they, uh, you're still in the hole. And it doesn't matter which hole it is, it's still the Vatican's definitions. So universal law literally gets you out of the rabbit holes, any rabbit holes, um, and puts you firmly in alignment with a different perspective, looking at what it is that you've just been crediting. So these words that we use quite a lot, such as creditor, um, uh, secured party, these are the, actually what you're doing. It's the deed that's being done by you that credits the reality that we see around us. So if we credit a legal fiction and stand there in our un incapacitated mind, let's say, saying this is true, this is, you know, this is true, this is real, then it doesn't matter what anybody else says, it's real for you. So you're actually standing there, uh, all of us, and we've all spent time doing this, arguing about which rabbit hole it is, has got the value in it. Um, so the people uh, in this position now who have gone through common law court and things like that, they've registered their birth certificates. First of all, can you claim something that you didn't create as yours? No, you can't because it's not yours. Did you create planet Earth and all of her resources? No, you didn't. Or you might have done, but you, you're in a different state of being other than this man-made definition. But do you have a right to claim anything as yours unless you made it? So just taking a step back and looking at that, what is it that we actually created? We, everything that we have got the potential to create, we've parked behind a legal entity that's not ours, that is represented by a piece of paper that you all know about with the birth certificate. And then along comes, you, you're just coming out of your sleepy state and whoop, there's a common law waiting for you. So the common law is great because it's got this lovely story that we all talk from school and it's like, oh yeah, you know, yeah, well, I remember learning about that and I'll have a look at this because it's familiar. And the way that this uh, vortex of knowledge sucks your uh, mind in is by telling you a tiny little bit of truth. Sugar-coated shit it is. And you need to start to recognize it without whether it's sugar-coated or not, it's still what it is, on the, you know, it is complete and utter bullshit, which is what they've given us as a, as a get out uh, from murdering the ball, let's say, when we had the opportunity to, 
they gave us, all oh, right, okay, we'll make an agreement now, backs against the wall, and we'll give you your common law rights. We'll even write them down. Well, the minute that you've written them down, guys, it's not law anymore. It's a man-made perception of what the law is. And if I can write your rights down in a book or a piece of paper and hand them to you, then it would imply that I had them to give to you in the first place. So anybody uh, going on about common law, I was the Sheriff of Dorset and the Common Law Court in 2014, 2015. We went and invoked, so we thought, Article 61 and took 32 acres of land in Magna Road in Bournemouth. And the, we built a house in five hours with five people. The police came, tried to arrest me, um, we couldn't. And then uh, we ended up with 40 armed police officers in the end, about six weeks later. Um, the, the judge in the court screaming, there's no common law in this country anymore. And the Baron Rutledge, who I was supposed to have sworn my oath to, his secretary, when I called and said, look, I'm acting as a sheriff of Dorset, I want to know is Article 61 going to be upheld by the barons? And he just simply said, Madam, it would be political suicide if I were to confirm or deny that Article 61 was going to be upheld. For me, that was it. I, it was the punch in the face, if you like, of the, the whole thing is one complete charade uh, as a, a, a just like a, a room for you to go through so you're nearly there you've got to this point now you know it's not right you know that something's going on and you want to know enough uh, you know you want to know you want enough to know let's say you don't know what it is that you're looking for at this point none of us did at that point but it seems like it's a natural transgression to go through the common law portal into that room see it and take it in that you know there's so many people now coming across and saying we've tried to do this we've filed these documents we've registered our birth certificates none of it's yours i've got you know people coming now many many people have done this uh, uh claiming their trust so first of all crown corporation you can't trust them can you so anything that they've got that is uh, being uh, presented to you as a trust straight away is fraud because you can't trust a corporation. In 1934, they created the Securities and Exchange Commission Act and the Indenture Act. And that, if you read it, it explains to you that the, uh, this legislation allowed a corporation to behave like a trust. But you, the two things are completely separate. You can't put those two things together because otherwise it would be just a trust, wouldn't it? It'd be working on for the benefit of the beneficiaries or it is working for the benefit of the shareholders. Now, what if the beneficiaries were the shareholders? And that really is what's happened. You have, as the beneficiaries of the share of this planet and its resources that were supposed to be held on trust for you both through the paper bull trust as long as you were a christian then you wouldn't have to pay again pagan paypal is pay again in greek paypal so all of this system that they've put in front of you is to divide can you just turn your videos off please because otherwise your faces are going to be all over the 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 training things not that we mind obviously lovely faces but i don't know if you'd be pleased when you see them all over youtube so um where was i before your face popped up so the vatican book the papal bull trust so those trusts were created to be uh, to to for the feudal lords really for the templar knights to go and force all of the belief of Christianity upon the rest of the world um, and the right of use of their property would be reserved from having taxable deductions applied. And the, really that's where the trust structure came from. Now, trust for me, it's not a thing that you write down or you can draw on a piece of paper with three circles or it hasn't got a title. Um, you know, a LLP 
trust or a family trust or an equitable trust or express trust or you know you can go on and on it's the thing that you feel when you speak to somebody it's that that you either give away or you don't now given all the information that we've got if you were at that point now where crown corporation was coming to you as it should have done and offered you a contract or an agreement it should have given you all of the terms and conditions of what you were agreeing to first of all so that you could accept and consider what it was that you were saying yes to there should have been a mutual benefit in there and a meeting of the minds and obviously full disclosure those five things create in the legal system valid contract that's the definition of a valid contract now obviously none of those terms and conditions or um, criteria was met through the creation of the birth certificate so let's get back to can i can i trust a company that came to me and and did that can i trust a company that came to me and said right uh, i'm your trust i'm your government you need to do this you need to go and give me your children uh, i'll give you a piece of paper back and i uh, but i'm not going to actually tell you that when you tell me that you've had a child and you confirm this and you are uh, actually creating a contract and I haven't told you that you need to take that child every year for the first seven years of its life to be evidence being alive then straight away any contractual obligations that are undisclosed meant that I couldn't accept or consider what it is that I was actually saying yes to could I so if a company did that to you would you trust them so here we are now, let's say, you know, 50 year old guy wakes up, realizes what's going on. And so off he goes down the rabbit hole to go and claim his rights back. From who? You go in and actually claiming your rights and saying, you've got my rights over there, or you've got my trust, or give me my money. It's, uh, you're actually granting authority to them because you're, you're implying that they could have something of some value that was yours now peel back another layer how can a corporation have something of some value anyway it's a it's a legal fiction it's a dead thing speaking it doesn't exist unless you go and you hand all your rights over to it and assign your consent to it by putting all of your what you are your indefinable state into a defined state that's a copyrighted logo belonging to that company can you trust them now? Would you trust anything that they would say to you? So you, here you are with all of this wonderful knowledge that you've learned over the years, and then you suddenly turn around and they so dangle the carrot at you and say, ooh, here's your trust, guys, got a million quid in it. Or here's your bonds on treasurydirect.gov, which not created in your name, are they? They're created with a number that was associated with that capitalized version of your given name, that's all. The worst thing is that all of that wealth, if you want to call it wealth, that's sat inside those accounts as collateral, was built on yours and other people's slavery for millennia. Do you want what that represents? Do you want to release that into your community and build a new community off the back of it? What the hell are you gonna create from a load of slave tokens? More slavery. The sustainability of what? Fiat currency. And your own slavery within that. So, first of all, it's trust yourself. Do I trust myself enough to sit down and unpack every single indoctrinated belief that I have bought or sucked up along the way as fact? And if I can't trust myself to put all of those aside, then nothing that anybody says in any of these or in any of the uh, documents are going to make any sense at all. Because you, the perception of the level of the mind that's coming at this is so contaminated with, I've got a trust and it's mine. This is my name and I want it back. So again, what is you've got a trust where is that trust where is that belief that you've got is it in yourself have you been vet have you vested it in yourself or have you invested it in 
something that somebody else has projected onto you. And that is, I think, been the biggest stumbling block for most people is because that they cannot trust themselves. So when you read the documents on the undocumented part of the website, we put them up there because we want you to see what you're getting into. Now, obviously, the, those documents are you right into yourself. They come from your trust. And they say that if you use that legal fiction, you'll be prosecuted if you use it. That name is under non-disclosure. So we just talked about that. The name was created under undisclosed terms and conditions and it isn't yours to use. And you will be proper prosecuted if you use it. Both of those two things are true right now without you doing anything at all. If you use that name, you'll be prosecuting yourself for using it. It was created under non-disclosed terms and conditions. So why the hell would you want to pick it up and say it's yours? It's absolutely now. I mean, obviously, I did. I did use it a lot uh, <laughs> because it, we thought it was our names. But when you get to the point, that realization point of just those two things, there. Can I use something that doesn't belong to me without the right of use or a license being granted to me? So call the Home Office. Go to the police. Go and get it on the recording. If I and just want some clarification now, if I don't have the right of use of something and I pick it up and use it and say it's mine, is that not twocking at the least? Is that not attempted theft of the creator of that thing or the owner of the copyrighted patent? And the answer is yes, it is. You are committing fraud and theft. So then you would need to report yourself which is very funny. We've had quite a lot of people doing this and just go and have some fun with it. Hey, hey. Hi guys. Just put yourself on mute, can you? Because we're just recording this for training. Um, so here you are uh, at the police station. I've brought these pieces of incriminating paper and I need to report a fraud. Oh, who's been committing fraud? Well, might be me. It might be you, it might be the Crown Corporation, it might be the Vatican, it might be these corporations that have been trading on this name as well, I don't know, but I'm here to give them back to you because you're an agent of the Crown Corporation, aren't you? Yeah, okay, cool. I can't throw them in the bin because I would be disposing of somebody else's property. So I'm giving these to you, to you. You're not gonna go register them in the common law courts, it's not yours. The common law court belongs to the ecclesiastical system, but we'll get to that bit in a minute. So here you go, there's the papers back. Well, these are the birth certificates. Yeah, they are, yeah. I need a receipt for that. Well, what name am I going to put in the book, the policeman or woman will say. We can put Emma Venn in there. Oh, it was Emma Venn, me. Energy and matter in movement. And my title for this particular performance is Minister. Oh, okay. we might minister an event in there. Have you got any ID that shows you the minister an event? Yeah, here you go. It's my blue Peter cornflake packet, sticky back plastic with my mugshot on it because that's all you deserve. A legal fiction apparition of my indoctrinated mind that I have just severed the contract of and given you back the incriminating documentation. And you need to give me a receipt now with a log reference number to say, man, woman, six foot tall, blonde hair, blah, 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 describe you. How I would describe you, just describe me. As is, you know, how you would you describe a suspect if you, if you don't know what their name is. And then you write in there, give me a log number and you give me a paper that says I have no papers. And I've got one of these, it's very nice. And I've used it, it's very funny. I didn't, and this is why I'm telling you to don't obviously let them use the name that you've given on the, on the birth certificate for, as a receipt, because that's what they did. Um, and so when the police had stopped me again, because there was a warrant out for that legal fiction name, so they wanted to put it in the prison for five and a half years, but I'll tell you about that later. And um, so they'd stopped the, the coronavirus antidote testing van and asked for the papers. I haven't got any. You're driving a van in, in, in Greece and you haven't got any papers. Nope. Uh, right, okay, well, uh, what happened to your papers? Well, they, they got stolen. Who's, and who's stolen? 
paper, I don't know who stole them. Well, you must have a paper that you reported it is stolen at the police station. I have. Where is it? In the back of the van. Can we get it? Yes, you can. Go in there, get it out. He looks at the paper and he says, well, so are you, Elizabeth Nelson? I said, I'm most certainly not. He says, so why are you showing me a piece of paper that's got that name on it? I said, well, somebody took that name, fixed a contract with it and said it was me. And he just looked at me and said, why should I believe that? And I said, because it is the truth. And now at this point, I thought I was just going to be arrested straight off the side of the road because of the war and, and because of the paper. And he, he just folded the paper back up, gave it back to me and said, have a lovely trip. And off we went. Why did that happen, do you think? Because the truth is, somebody took that name. They fixed a contract with it without your consent. And they have said that that is you. All of those things are true. Who did that? Don't anybody answer it from who's already done these courses, these webinars. Have we got anybody new who might like to take a guess at who fixed that contract and said it was you? Anybody? You have to take yourself off mute. You want to interact? My parents. Who said that? Right before Elizabeth. Who is it? Ian, is that you speaking? Uh, it's Nick. Reclaim the Lord, Nick. Oh, sorry. Hi, uh, Hi, Nick. Hi, Elizabeth. Yes, it is. It's, it's your parents. And so laughingly, you know, I've said, I've even asked my old, older children to prosecute me, but they won't. Um, and we should be prosecuting our parents, really, if we're going to prosecute anybody. <laughs> and I said to my mom, well, you know, can I prosecute you? And she said, I knew it would be you. Out of all of us, I've got four brothers and two sisters. That would be the death of me, she's screaming. <laughs> so I didn't bother uh, to do that because she wasn't in the right mind for her to be able to kind of grasp what it is that I was uh, trying to get her to see. Um, but really, this is, we are prosecuting ourselves. That's why those documents are written the way that they are. And the, the, what has been that one piece of paper, that assignment of consent stops you from doing that. So it reserves all of your rights. It rebuts the presumption that you haven't bothered to show due diligence and take care of your own execution of your own estate, affair, whatever you want to call it, your own, well, your right of use of the share in the planet of its resources is really what it is that you haven't shown due diligence for because you didn't know. Whether you knew a bit or whether it, you didn't know how to, because nobody taught them. So this is really what we do. I I teach you how to do this, how to be your own broker, how to execute your own estate, how to create your own uh, economy, and um, and you don't need to think about trusting private corporation or anybody else for that matter you are minister of event and you are responsible for what you do with your share of the right of use of this planet if you go and grant it away to a private corporation then this is what it looks like if you don't it looks very different you know you are reaching out and accessing your resources directly because you put yourself in a position where nobody that it's not really much nobody your mind does not manifest and project the uh, fiction to become apparent as real. You, you know that you are the creator of your own reality and so you just don't allow that in. I mean, I, I'm now going and trying to contract with the police to, and they're just like, they look the other way. You know, I'm walking past them, spraying people with the antidote and I've got a big sign on my van and they've got the, the private plates on. Nothing. They don't want to play anymore because the last time they played with me, 
I cost them 1,100,000 slave tokens for a lovely three months stay in one of their Greek hotels. And uh, 27 people who are released while they were in there. We had a lovely riot where we all went on uh, food strike, on, on hunger strike. And then uh, they couldn't get me out there quick, quick enough. And then they tried to deport me and they couldn't. So they took me to the deportation place and they said, right, because you've got a sentence, who we don't know, because you've got a sentence over a year, you have to go back to where you come from. Where do you come from? The universe. Send me back there. Uh, uh, no, which country do you come from? I don't recognise countries, the borders in your mind. Well, which state are you from? I'm stateless. Where's your ID? You're looking at it. Well, we don't recognise that. Exactly. That's why I'm standing here and not doing five and a half years. Well, we're going to have to keep you here until we can find an embassy that's registered here in Greece that's going to claim you. Well, good luck with that because that's why I'm standing here and not doing five and a half years because I've been claimed by Universal Law Community Trust, which actually happened. So they put me in this awful cell uh, thinking I'm going to be there this was Friday night. I'm going to be there until at least Monday. Saturday morning came after I cleaned it all. And he says, right, Mrs. whoever you are, you need to get out. And I said, who, go where? And he said, you, wherever you want. And I said, I thought you were checking every embassy that was registered in Greece. He said, I did, and nobody wants you. Now, that for me, I, you know, I, I always thought that I would be a bit upset to hear that nobody wants me, but <laughs> it was the most liberating moment in my entire experience of this thing we call life. And that was it. Um, I, I've got no papers, I travel freely, um, nobody intercepts me from exercising or practicing my rights. Um, we open shops, we use rocks as exchange so we're not in currency, we're not in using their currency so we're not in commerce, we teach all of this. And uh, my rights are reserved under universal law and the irony is they can't get the Pope or the, one of their bishops to come because that is their pretense that they are there covering their conscience by upholding universal law while with the Catholic key. Catholic key means universal in Greek. So the Catholic church is the universal church. So they're standing there as the universal church, screwing us and prosecuting us because we are committing fraud upon universal law. How? We're laying a claim to something that was never ours. And we are diminishing ourselves by a by a man-made definition. So, who are you? I'm unalienable. I'm indefinable. You want me to try to diminish myself as a Vatican debt slave? Is that what you want, Mr. Policy Enforcer? Because if that's what you want, then immediately you're guilty of impersonating a police officer because you can't be a police officer while you're breaking the law. And you're coercing me to break the law, which is seven years in prison for impersonating a police officer, seven years for attempted statutory rape by getting me to diminish myself as a nothing, and seven years for fraud. So that's 21 years. Do you still want to go ahead and intercept me exercising my rights? because that is what you're looking at. So the, the chief of police here, they lost their jobs in two islands. Policemen retired left, right and center because what we did is proved that the whole, the whole administrative system was a fraud. And we got them, whether we set them up or not, I don't know, I think the universe did it and put somebody there who put cannabis in my house and ended up with a trumped up charge for cannabis because they could not touch me for anything else. They couldn't touch me for my shops because they were private, they couldn't touch me for the conveyances because they were private. And this, we're talking about a, a fascist police state here. It's not, we're talking about having common law, you know, any, any idea of actually having any rights. Um, it just is um, hammered into these people that this is Greek law and it's not it's 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 English civil code Greek civil uh, German civil code hashed together and fed back to the Greeks by the Vatican and enforced and upheld by the Byzantium version of the Vatican and that's why we use rocks because everything that is if you look at the stock exchange what's it made from hypothesis of 
gold, silver, mineral wealth, commodities, the rock, planet Earth, and all that she represents. Divide up into dividends and commodity lists and codes and then account numbers and utility transmitting accounts, which is what you're actually referred to inside their system. So if you're a utility transmitting account, according to them, then transmit a currency or a frequency that they cannot harvest, which is the opposite of fear and hate. That's their commodity, really. They're harvesting all of our energy from the universe, from our universal source in fear and hate. So the debt that we talk about is the debt, the universal debt to kindness. And so what we did is set them up into a position where they, they actually diminished themselves. They made themselves obsolete. They prosecuted themselves instead of us prosecuting ourselves. And we said, okay, you like the game of fiction. Here comes Minister Maven. Now imagine a chessboard. Minister Maven is worse than the queen because it moves anywhere it wants. Sometimes it's there, sometimes it's not. It's got, uh, because it's got no definition. So the, the minute that you say, I'm Minister Maven, everything that they have been uh, conditioned and programmed with falls down because there was no in the point of initiation there. Yes, they're going to use fear of threat and, and prosecution and what we're going to do to you and, and all of this. And, you know, you have to be strong enough in the mind to say, I know that they can only keep me a maximum of 72 hours. No matter what these thugs try to imply or try to uh, have me believe, I know that much don't need to know anything else. I know that they need to charge somebody within 72 hours. Now, okay. if, if I haven't got a legal fiction for them to use, no charge can be applied. And I've actually proven this as well with situation with cars. They wanted to give me a ticket for, because my number plate said on non-disclosure in Greek. Some of you might have seen the videos um, where the Aporito plates are on other people's cars now. Now, Porito means shh under non-disclosure. Now, um, I'd written that on the back of my commercial plate and driving around. And when they couldn't get me for the shop, they tried to get me for the car. So they tried to lay a claim against me for that. And I said to the police, look, how do you know? He said, how do you know I haven't got commercial plates? We're writing you a ticket because you haven't got the number plates that we recognise. Right, okay, but are you writing me a ticket so that I haven't got any? Yes. Well, how do you know I haven't got any? If I go outside with a screwdriver and I turn the number plates over like James Bond, I said, it will be in commerce and you'll owe me 10 grand. Have you got 10 grand? And he's like, what? I said, come on, outside. So I turned the number plates over and said, ta-da, that would be, be 10 grand each, please, for two number plates. And um, uh, so they went inside, they ripped the ticket up that they'd created to say I haven't got any number plates. And now they're going to try and do me for not having a driving license. Now I'm in commerce, obviously. So the driving license, got its rights, with they've already been served as a photocopy of evidence down at the head office at the police station in their capital. I said, are you sure I haven't got a driving license before you write that ticket? Well, well, well you haven't given it to us. It doesn't mean I haven't got one there, does it? Just because I haven't given you it. But it, that you call the head office and find out if that's true before you commit more fraud in writing. So <laughs> they did. And they said, yeah, okay, they described me. Um, yes, there was a driving license there. Now they're going to use the driving license. That the information is now hearsay from a photocopy. Okay, nobody's actually seen at this point a valid driving license. Nobody's got one. And um, and so they said, uh, so they start to write this ticket now. They ripped up the one for not having a driving license. I said, what are you writing now? And so he said, we're writing the ticket for ten euros because you won't identify yourself. And I thought, oh, this is beautiful. So I stood and watched him as he wrote the legal fiction on, on the ticket. And I said, so that's really amazing. So he said, why? And I went to take it. 
as had Alex Seplat as Minister of Maven, the liability holder in due course for the Nolson Family Trust, with all the rights assigned to me. I said, uh, but I'm having that one. So he said, oh, so you want this one? I said, yeah, I said, because that just, what you've done there, you've actually written your attempted fraud in writing for me. It's a receipt for your attempted theft of my rights because you've put a legal fiction on there and then tried to charge it 10 euros for not identifying itself. So if I haven't identified myself, where have you got the legal fiction from? So he'd gone to grab the ticket of me and just said, no, I'm keeping that one. And I reused it in the case. I built a whole case from, for, that covered just short of three years to bring it to a head in the Supreme Court of State in December the 3rd last year. Um, where I went in and I took the epicratia into, lifted it into the jurisdiction of universal law and discharged all the charges. And um, they, what they did uh, was a quiet title, something, have a look in the Black's Law Dictionary about quiet title. Their definition is that it quietens a claim that somebody can make against you. But reverse that, it's a quiet, it quietens the presumptions that you are or ever will be making a claim to anything that isn't yours. Oh. Does everybody get that? Yep. Cool. So what we've done to them is we've said, look, we haven't got any contract with you. We're still looking for the contract. The Supreme Court of State haven't been able to find one between anybody, not just people who were involved in this particular case, um, but at all. And so we've got a universal injunction against any private corporation attempting to force commercial intercourse void a valid contract. Now, what does that say? That because we all know that any contract created with legal fiction is void, isn't it? So what did that do to the system of contracts? Bang. Now, this contract was between Ellis, Alada, everything is Greek before the Romans came and corrupted it all and called the, you know, defined it as their own in the Babylonians. Um, and the, the, their definition of uh, the rock, the rock of light, Ellis, is actually the equity that is all being sucked into the world trade centers as these commodities funneled into the capital so it's taken by Rome by presumption through the trust, funneled in through the Christian name and the use of legal fiction, funneled into London as the capital of capitalism, of, of laundering this legal system of corporate entities being and having some kind of rights, and then fed into the SEC in Washington and the Trust Depository Corporation. Trust and corporation in the same title, very nice knot. So, when we secured the Lenic Republic here, uh, that was the year before, that was for 37 quadrillion because we had 1.3 million people over here assign their consent to us. In, in the, we took two weeks to do it, but it came in one assignment of consent. Um, and we became secured party to them, and that's really the real reason why they wanted to hammer me. And, and put me in the prison for as long as they could. Um, and they, uh, where was they? So then what was just happened today? So we had to secure Lenic Republic for the equity. So there's no more equity, be, there hasn't been any equity at all fed into their system since 2019, but they were still able to imply that they were committing commerce or there was some commerce to commit because everybody was still using their slave tokens, still using their legal fiction. So we kept it alive for them, the people that did that. That came crashing down on the 25th of February when we became secured party to Her Majesty's government. Um, they lost their AAA credit rating. And they on the 26th, the market crashed and then 13 days later, they had to create another pot for you, uh, for everybody to have their belief laundered in, which is coronavirus, stumped up by Bill Gates to support the illusion that the government is still in existence. Now, something happened today, which is very important. I'm very happy that somebody has been working away in the background over in America, and they, their secured party is the Trust Depository Corporation. Now they've assigned that, uh, they are doing cross 
to into their own universal law community trust version over there and that's the three triad that's the trust within the trust within the trust secured in universal law so what does that mean to people the restoration of rights now is underway and it has been underway since february i've been trying to get the people to learn what it is that you have a right to do first of all you have an obligation to uphold the law and if you witness or know of a crime being enacted and you do nothing about it you're actually incriminated by your uh, by your complicitness and acquiescence so okay now she's telling us to go and arrest the police yes i am and i've done it myself and it's very funny and they don't know what to do and when you do do that um, something really magical happens in front of your very eyes because you don't do it in a violent way. You just say, look, you know, I'm Minister of Ven and I'm obligated, I'm under warrant from the Universal Law Community Trust to uphold Universal Law and I can't just stand here and, and accept what it is that I just witnessed you do. So you're wearing a uniform. I saw what you did, you tried to even force somebody to identify themselves as statutory rape, and I have to arrest you. So I'm placing my, I'm going to, so you put them on notice, I'm going to place my hands upon you, and I'm, I have grounds to believe that uh, you're breaking the law. Now, at this point then, they get their buddies and they throw them on the floor and they stuff your arms up your back and they throw you in a dog van. And I know that because I did that and uh, many times and it doesn't stop me doing it because it's still, you are obligated to do it. But what happens then in that police station is that they're screwed. They can't do anything with you. They've got a woman in there, they're going to try, or a man in there, and they're trying to make out that you have assaulted a policeman now. Great, okay. It's reasonable force. You want to call it assault. Are you were assaulting that individual there and trying to statutory rape them and commit the coerce them into committing fraud upon their soul. And now I'm getting involved because under universal law, I'm, I'm just not going to allow that to happen in my community. I'm just not. So um, they then want to lay a claim against you. They can't lay a claim against you because obviously, take us to the police station. Here we are at the desk, right? Um, well, you've been arrested for assault or obstruction police. No, I have object to that. <laughs> Not accepting that. I have arrested him or her. I brought them here in their police cars, but I had to come with these handcuffs on because they don't understand what the law is, but obviously your chief inspector will or your chief constable will. And so I, this is the reason why I immediately counterclaim it. You rebut the presumption that they, in their jurisdiction, that you have been the one that you, you're the criminal, you are the one who broke the rules, no. You broke the law. And when it gets to that point, they have to drop the charges because they can't afford for what to happen, which will happen is that you get to the magistrates, you demur it to the crown. If there was a crown anymore, it's gone. So it's going to be in the Ministry of Remedy. The, at that point there, they have to, uh, the judge and the jury or whatever, at that point, turn around and say, right, okay, so why did you not give your name? Or why did you get involved in the situation? Why did you assault a policeman? Well, he was impersonating a policeman. What do you mean he was impersonating? He was breaking the law while he was wearing a uniform. So am I not under the law, which is what we're supposed to be here to be upholding, is it not? Is I mean, not under the law, obliged to prevent a crime from being enacted? And is it not also true that if somebody forces somebody to diminish themselves to be a nothing, then they are statutory, they're raping them with their statutory rights. And you get them to answer this. I mean, I've shut the courts down here last year just by going in very simply and saying, if I take something that is not mine and, and create a contract with it, what's that? To the judge. Well, it's fraud. Okay, so if a corporation takes all of everything that everybody that everybody's name fixes a contract with it, and uh, and and uh, without their consent, then that's bloody big fraud, isn't it? And at that point, that was it. They jumped up and left. The court has never opened again.
they had to bring the the appeal court to Samos now to hear the cases because they cannot operate into proto Dikaia court. And it isn't just there, did it in Kabbalah, did it in Thessaloniki, did it in Athens. And this is why we got coronavirus, because the amount of people that stopped believing that bullshit was enough to reach critical mass that oh, the whole thing fell down. So that's why we've got, we're in this position now. This is your learning. This is learning an opportunity to learn all these things. So where are we at right now? The debt, we all know that if a debt is secured upon collateral and the debtor doesn't pay, what happens? The, the creditor can take the collateral, can't they? If it's peacefully surrendered, they don't even need a court order. And you can read that in their writing, UCC 9609610. So here we are now, they're the ones who've got the debt with you, with all people of the planet, because they've been trespassing on your rights. We told them to stop and they didn't. So they incurred huge costs by accepting our terms and conditions of our schedule lay. We put them a notice of commencement of contract. They didn't pay their invoices, of course, and they can't because we don't accept slave tokens. And we only accept rocks. So we took, we accepted the rock, which is what they'd used in 1934, and said, we've got a debt, we can't pay it. So they took all of our rights, our treasury accounts, and all of this legal fiction system to re-launder us back through their Ashkenazi system. Now, imagine now you are, which you are, you, everybody's inside universal law anyway, because it runs through you, it is you, it's what your body operates by. As a community of people who trust in universal law, which is the, the description of the title that we loosely use, is that you've got all of these people now in your community who have reached critical mass point and they're not going to carry on credit in this system anymore. They realise that they are the equity and the wealth behind these accounts. Some are just learning that. Some of us still think that there is value to that leap of fiction and we're just trying to extrapolate their minds from there little by little. When you get to that point, you suddenly write, okay, I'm, I'm a creditor. I credited this legal fiction and I assigned all my rights to HM government. So I was an unsecured creditor of HM government, HMRC, all agents thereof. Now I'm the secured party creditor and would a secured mind credit a terrorist system of itself? No. So what you're actually doing is you're discharging the debt that your mind and your created for your body to support in that system. And you are accepting the responsibility that nobody is gonna do this except you because there's nobody that can. And so you take all of those charges, all of that debt that you've created that that parasitical system has been feeding off your energy from and you put it into the website and that creates your first trust. You trusted yourself enough, you know, first of all, to say, I know it's not mine. I mean, in the beginning, we had people saying, oh, I will put my legal fiction in there and my national insurance number and you might steal my legal entity. Oh, you, it's you that's stealing it, you lunatic. Well, I'm trying to stop you stealing it. We're trying to say, you, you picked it up and stolen it from Crown Corporation. And that's the whole process that we're trying to help you stop doing. So trust yourself enough to press that button that goes over there and you get a nice assignment back and it says that this account number and that title is no longer your liability. What did you do there? You just created your own trust to discharge and stand surety to you in the system of commerce that you are in control of now. So it's you are the minister of yourself, whatever that looks like. Now, in that account now, let's say there's, let's say you've done your mortgage, you've done your electricity, your car hire company, da 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 da, and let's say there's a sizable amount, a half a million. So there's half a million slave tokens worth of credit, kindness credit, sitting in that account, and we then say, would you like to discharge half a million off HM government's debt using that credit that you've got? 
so that you become secured party creditor and now you're the official receiver. You, the company's gone into liquidation. The liquidation is you, you're the asset and you're liquidating yourself. And you say, yes, I bloody well would. <laughs> there you go. Take the debt and turn it into credit and apply that credit there because your debt is their credit, right? Everybody gets that, I'm sure. So this debt here, if I paid it, if I paid half a million in debt, I've created 500 million in the fiat currency system. We could be really, really generous and call, say knock off 500 million, but we're not because it's just the paper value because there's no negotiation and no, none of that shenanigans going in the background. It's just paper for paper. So get to the uh, offer of settlement. A million, let's say half a million, uh, 500 a thousand whatever it is and we say thank you very much we have accepted your kind offer creditor of universal law to discharge this naughty debtor account hm government null agents thereof they've got 10 quadrillion debt sitting in that account there we've applied your half a million credit to it so it's only 10 quadrillion da -la 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 -la, and half a million at the end and they get a receipt now, who are you? You're the official receivers, equivalent. You are the treasury solicitor, equivalent. You are all of those legal titles that you thought that you couldn't be because you had to know this, you had to know that. You didn't need to know anything except how debt was created and discharged. And that's it. So, Go and earmark a piece of land like we've done in Preston. People up there have got together, earmark the land in Preston to grow food on it, giving it a value. We took that a longitude and latitude, created a quiet title and used that as collateral and knocked it kindly off HM government's debt. It only made a little dint in there, of course, because it's got 1% compounded interest every day. They're not standing, just like they did to you. So anybody who says that I haven't got a thorough understanding of banking, um, if it's not how it works, uh, backed on the back of a rock, then uh, I'd love somebody to come and, and uh, educate me in, in, the, in the workings of uh, fraudulent finance because they, you know, I used to sell you in the stock exchange. So uh, that's the debt that I'm settling. Now, uh, going back to the trust mechanics, um, here you are now inside the community trust, so that replaces your corporate council. You can uh, the, the earmark the land, so there's growing projects there. Some other people have gone and had, uh, looked at hospitals, old hospitals, so we've now got a nice group of people who have just kindly offered five hours of their time to come and help us to restore the to its former glory, so it can be used to provide natural remedies, healing with people's machinery equipment they've got, doulas which are midwives instead of, uh, sorry, doulas which are people who help women give birth or born <laughs> um, instead of midwives and you've got people growing food, you've got a network of farms, you've got hubs across the country, you've got people uh, exchanging their energies, mechanics, you've got free energy, uh, all of the charges, all of the presumption of commerce being allowed to be committed on your rights is now dissolved. That's obsolete. Whether you want to take a week to learn that, a month to learn that, a year, whatever, that's down to you. The, um, the rights are there for you to exercise them. We've got people, uh, People's Protection Patrol where we're actually using the mechanics set up as the administrative system in order for people to be able to support themselves while we do this transition. Um, 16 to 26 year olds on universal credit can be given a job uh, as a people's protection patrol to replace the police. Um, just like G4S, private police force, they're registered also your Metropolitan Police in Dunham Street, whatever it's called another fraudulent register that's secured by us um, and the uh, collateral and police have been put on notice um, that if they don't have the correct 
registration plates that have been issued by Universal or Community Trust and they won't be issued them if they don't meet the grade. So they're all being assessed as to the standard of what their definition of law is, as to whether they'll keep their contracts or not. They're all going to be, contracts are all severed otherwise. They have, we have got no use of anybody in our community forcing commercial code that's written by obsolete corporations that are fictions of the un incapacitated mind. We haven't got any credit for that. And it definitely hasn't got any right to be exercised. So after the 23rd, I think it is of February, the, if, the, uh, if people don't have ULCT plates on their conveyances or their own trust plates on there, um, then the, you'll be issuing fines to them instead because they are under occupation of your land, your right of use of that particular piece of land there known as England and Wales and the rest of it. Um, and they have got no license to be. <laughs> yeah. So I'm very happy about that, and Anne obviously is very happy about that, as you can hear. Um, has anybody got any questions about what I've just explained? Oh, no. uh, are you feeling better? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm bloody awesome, can't you tell? Oh yeah, absolutely, it's wonderful. It's wonderful. Finally, um, people have got to hear about this, it's just great. Yeah. I, yeah, I suppose the thing is, there are going to be lots of people wanting to know, and I'm going to ask, would you say that the best way to start is with a Zoom meeting like this, as a sort of beginner's um, group meeting? Yeah. Yeah? Would yeah. And you've done that, haven't you? So... Yeah, I mean, we do, the, what I've done for people in London and South West tomorrow, I've organised a, a meeting for them um, that I need to add to you, that you're the seasoned travellers, let's call you, um, uh, onto, um, because there's quite a sizable group of, of quite active people, very knowledgeable to, up to the degree about the common law and all of that. Um so that we, you know, we are getting getting the cream at the top now. It's working as a really great filter. Those people who are just still chasing slave tokens seem to, you know, they're they're going to be still in common law until it turns into rocks for them. But these are the people like that we've got tonight. Got a lovely selection of people who, you know, have asked some valid questions and, but you know, before they got in here. And they've not got any now, though, I don't know why. <laughs> and I've spent hours on the phone with some of them, um, which has been really lovely. So, yeah, so get making these connections now. The way to start this off in your community, we found, is with the food. So tell us how much food it is that you use in a week. Uh, we've got the kindness credit claim form on the website. If you click that, um, and it's got a list of some of the products that we've got on there. I know Cara's building another product list for us from individual people as well um, to add to that. And the idea is that the distribution hub's going to take place in one place and then all of the, all of the logistics for everybody who's done five hours in Beauty by Van, for example, come and meet us halfway. We'll give you whatever it is the orders are for your community. Let your community know that on Wednesday afternoon, come to my house or come to my shop and come and collect your organic food orders. Um, and then obviously, like we found in Bournemouth, the, the hubs turn into homeschooling. You've got people doing healing in the garden and, you know, and just a general well-being. This was in the middle of the coronavirus all this went on, the first lockdown. So, yeah, and it, it replaces the supermarket. So if the police, you know, if people are just learning this and they're like, well, oh, I'm not really comfortable about taking my number plates off yet. I'm not ready. Or I don't want to use the MVN card. Or I'm still, you know, I've got my foot in the camps. Okay. Where are you going? Please stop you. I'm going for my essential food. 
I didn't say where. I didn't say I'm going to my mate's house over the road there because that's where I go and get my organic food from, the kindness credit selection boxes, because I'm part of this trust and I gave five hours and I haven't really got a contract with you, but I'm still a bit scared. But that's what's actually happening. So the inside there, you've got the teachers, you've got the growers, you've got mechanics, you've got gas engineers, electricity engineers, you've got really lovely conversation. I've just had a really, really lovely guy uh, and he designs the um, engines, to, you know, the jet engines. So I've told him that I'll do him five hours training for an exchange for a, a, a turbine, a water turbine in each town. <laughs> So, so we're getting a really, uh, really, everybody's coming, it's great, it's, you know, from all different walks of life, um, and everybody's, everybody's got something to offer, you know? So by putting it all in that pot, it stays private because it's all under kindness credits. Nobody needs to worry about the coronavirus because we've got the antidote to bullshit. We've been going around spraying people with that, giving them a certificate, which has worked very well. People have travelled from France to uh, England and back again, uh, Spain to England and back again with the coronavirus immunity record. Um, split, somebody went across Europe on a train. Uh, I don't know if he's here tonight. Oh, somebody's put their hand up. Ah, that's how that works. Hello, Nikki. Do you want to ask a question? Yes, I sure do. Okay, so I think I've got it wrong. Um, I think it's the kindness account that I need the three of for my husband, but I did make three accounts for the Proton Mill for myself. Um, I'm not quite clear. So when when on the initial pages, um, on the initial part of it where you're asking for the legal fiction, do I put the legal fiction that is under commerce or the new legal fiction that uh, I'm changing over to? So that wasn't clear to me. So I'd made three accounts and um, uh, I, I'd sent back a question asking if, if that was incorrect. And also I've been a teacher um, and in my latter days I've, I've just started doing mentoring and coaching. My question is, how would I then convert that into kindness into the community and also with my son? Because I've I took him out of um, that farce of education. So how would I then do it for him as well? Right. So um, I just posted some things that the HM government are selling the silver or trying to. They've always been doing this, obviously. The, there is the, the schools up for sale, there's laboratories, there's uh, whole industrial units that be, can be turned into hubs, um, and you have the right to restore them to your community. Now, uh, as far as schools go, this is really easy. I've homeschooled my youngest. Um, and the, the amount of people who've pulled out of the schools anyway is astronomical. Uh, especially in the Bournemouth and Dorset area where I was, uh, there was forest schools, there was, you could do, uh, we used to do book um, reading on a Monday, I have a big lunch all together at the houses, we'd take it in turns to whose house it was going to be at. The children loved it, they would read the book and then do a debate or a review or paint pictures about it or make little soft toys, um, go out into the woods with forest school. Uh, we do applied mathematics. Uh, we do that in the shop with the children when they come. Um, and so you would, in, 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 I hate the word incorporate, you would include all of that in your hub. So if you said, right, okay, my five hours is teaching children, what did you teach, Nikki? Uh, so it was mostly primary school. So just anything on the curriculum, really, the the general curriculum, every well, and anything. anything. Except the general curriculum that we teach. <laughs> <laughs> everything except that. Um, <laughs> um, but what we've done, it's a reset. We sent in, it's a reset program. And we, uh, anything that vaguely represents anything that we've had before, we just don't want any of that. So, Absolutely. you know, um, you've got all of these people where mechanics you've got people who do ground working uh, woodwork metal work 
uh, we've got these people coming on now. Here's three of these people that he's this guy's just brought in their designs and builds these engines for, for airplanes actually. Um, again, he's going to get involved with organizing um, for the children who have got their diplomas recently in engineering and the resources that are all yours. You'd say, right, okay. One person in the community puts a project proposal together and says, right, I want to create permaculture growing in, on this piece of land. Here's my design. I need this and this and this and this and this. So we look at the list all together and say, right, okay, well, this person's given five hours of that. Here's a builder's merchant that we've discharged the liabilities of that's given us five hours a week of building materials. We've got uh, this electricity for you to be able to used to support that project um, and you create your own co-operations okay okay um is there anyone here already already doing that in birmingham so i could sort of birmingham's a bit, uh, yeah birmingham's been a bit of a, a slow on the uptake really we have got i, I just have a look we've got Across the country, there's, uh, there's about 1,200 teachers that have applied for some job posts that Minister Minister then put on up. Uh, we've got about the same amount of electricians, plumbers, gas engineers, and about the same amount of people um, offering their five hours. If you want us to specifically, uh, you know, say, right, okay, give us a list. What is it that you use? Do financial logic. Uh, for the costings, but also do what is it the things that you use? I use a mechanic, right? So, I, if I want to use kinds of credits in my community, I know that once a year I'm going to have to pay slave tokens to a mechanic unless I go to the mechanic and I say to the mechanic, right, how much you're going to fix my car? How much is it going to be? 300 euros, 300 pounds. Why? What do you mean, why? Well, why is it 300 pounds? Well, because I've got to pay this, I've got to pay that, I've got to pay my gas, my electricity, and my council tax, my insurance, my debt, my da 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 And so, how many people like me do you need every month? Ten. My overheads are three grand a month. Okay, so, instead, why don't you fix my car, and instead of me giving you 300 euros, um, my kindness credit account will stand surety to you for 3,000 slave tokens worth of debt instead. But not just for this month, for the rest of your life. Now okay. tell me how much is that, how much is that guy's energy worth for five hours of his time to fix my car? It's not 300 quid anymore, is it? And the beauty of this is, the minute that he said yes to you to do that, then the next customer that walks through the door is money in his pocket because you just lifted his business into kindness credits, which is tax-free currency. So he never ever has to declare any of those transactions in anything other than rocks ever again. And he pays his tax to HMRC with rocks, legally. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, it's really great. And this is why I laugh when people are like, oh, she thinks she's gonna pay somebody with a rock. You don't know what backs my rock. If you come to me, I, I need a teacher, right? I want, you know, my daughter wants to speak, I don't know, Spanish. So I need a Spanish teacher. Uh, but I can go and insult her and say, right, well, okay, I'll give you 20 euros an hour to teach her. And this poor woman then has got 20 euros in the hand and she needs another 10 of them to pay uh, all of her overheads. So she needs another 10 customers like me to, to cover everything that she needs in order to live. How dare anybody turn around and capitalise on people's rights to exist? And it is only down to us who accept that as being okay. Well, it's legal, so you have to. You have to pay these bills. Hang on a minute. This is a statement of account. It's, they're actually counting the supply to the shareholder of the supply. And the shareholder didn't know that they were the shareholder assigned their consent to a private corporation to buy back the right to supply their house with their own electricity. And, and they think that they can come, if I don't pay you, I'm going to cut me off. 
we've just got a wonderful receipt. I mean, these receipts I've said for, for months and I know that there's loads of you waiting to laugh at me because I said, you would be a bloody idiot if you think that these, the, the, the system is ever going to give you a receipt to say, yes, what you've done is got standing. Obviously that thing with the company's house blew the lid off that. But we've already had that from the land registry. We don't accept debt equity swap. Well, great. We don't ever accept a debt equity swap. No bank, no council tax can add, add a charge to somebody's title deed then, can they? For a debt, because that's a debt equity swap, isn't it? Or what about the other one? What was the other one that we got from, uh, uh, from the electricity company here? Uh, one electricity company decided to drop the case after we'd forced the court to put the make an order to be connect the electricity at somebody's house. So this electricity company severed the contract to try to get out of it, and um, so they got a letter back from the equivalent of the national grid saying, if you don't create another contract with another corporation, your supply will be coming from the Catholic key supply, the universal supply. What's that? your share before you assigned it to a corporation. Thank you very much. We've got a receipt for that. Right, I've got other people sticking their hands up. Um, you have to bear with me with this. We, don't, don't, we normally get shouting out in these, don't we guys? So, if we claim the law, have you got a question? Yeah, I have. Um, I, I, we met years ago, Elizabeth. I came to your house in Bournemouth and stayed a night, I think. In my car outside, I don't know if you remember, we talked about common law at that stage. Um, yeah, I remember, yeah. Yeah, I'm really impressed by what you've done. I really am, and uh, full respect. I'd like to join. Um, I've, I mean, I figured out years ago that the birth certificate was a void contract, it was a receipt for a void contract, because the parents are not given disclosure that they're selling, they're signing their child away as surety on a national debt. So it's void because there's no disclosure of that fact to the parent. Um, you're in agreement with that? Yeah, that's what I just said. It's you know, it's. Uh... I wasn't quite sure what, exactly what you said. I, <laughs> I get confused quite easily. I, I'm, I've got a simple mind. It is. I mean, that's so, in a nutshell. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. those five points weren't met. The uh, consideration acceptance can't be done, can it? If I disclosed. Uh, there's no mutual benefit from a contract that I haven't done those three things with and therefore there's no meeting of the mind so there's no contract. Contract needs to be thrown out of the, of the universe because it's, uh, you know, conning you <laughs> back into uh, traction with Admiralty Law, with ecclesiastical standing. So an agreement or even an agreement, it sounds like argument, um, you, you're making an exchange, you, free exchange instead, and saying, look, I, I, I'm meeting you at the mind. I'm prepared to invest my five hours to do an exchange with your five hours. Not to come to me, but because it does come back to me, because you're helping the people in the, you know, putting your five hours in the community to build something. My grandchildren were there, you know. So it, it's all in our best interest to help one another and to get rid of this fraud and not invest any more time and even talking about it you know um we have to to, to help people get to the realization of where they're at in this map so there is a road map um that somebody very kindly did for us to show you where you're at now so uh and do, it's any charges are used to discharge that debt that's been created really um so yeah that's that's where we're at and all you have to do is go on the website and assign your consent back to yourself really could you drop the link to the website in the chat yeah and one thing that occurred to me i don't know how long it takes to do this process but could a group of people in a zoom call all do it together and be helped out along the way it takes maybe less than an hour i don't know how long it takes to do the process it takes as just, just, it takes but as quick as that website. Add the information, press send, and then you get an assignment of consent. That's it. Oh, I've done it. No, oh, it's gone privately. That's it. So 
How, uh, it's not, it's however long it is. Thanks, thanks, Karen. <laughs> however long it is that it takes for you to put your information in there, that's how long it is. Where do I put it? I've got the website up now. Lovely. Have you got any more questions? Yeah, where do I put my details in? Go down to the bottom of the home page. All right. Add the legal fiction, any account numbers associated with that legal fiction, the name of any companies that are trying to persecute you for profit, the amount, and then just, and if you want this to stand surety to your council tax, water, gas, electricity, put the postcode and address in, house number, and your council tax is done immediately as well. So you get a letter through from the council. Now, this, I love this, right? It's my favorite thing. It's one of them. You go in there and you put in Minister M. Venn at every single household. What's their data worth? They can't sell it, can they? They can't sell your data between them anymore because there's a big fat question mark in every single household. They do not know who is who and what is what. And if the name of the thing is not known, guess what? It's lost. And all knowledge regarding that thing is lost with it. And that is why you want to lose that name. My circumstance at the moment is I'm on universal credit on the uh, enterprise allowance. Right. Uh, I started a company under that process called Reclaim the Law Limited. And I have a Reclaim the Law Limited bank account with the co-op. Um, can they be incorporated into this, uh, this um, enterprise or do I have to drop them? Um, I, really what you just said to me is that I've, I've created another account in the HMRC so that we can launder they can, I've given them the opportunity to launder my national insurance number twice, which is very kind of you. Um, <laughs> very trusting. It's very kind of you to do that to them, for them. Um, what benefit do you get out of that? As I understand it, and I'm not an expert on this at all, I'm just learning, but as I understand it, I have limited liability should someone take my advice as a person talking about law and suffer damage i have limited liability to a pound that's as i understand it that's the purpose of a limited liability company right okay you've actually you, you've got unlimited liability in every walk of life um and you have unlimited indemnity to cover that too what you've done is you've gone in and said right i'm limited to one pound so really it's like um if you look at a co company now as, as a as a shop front for money laundering because that's all it is and it's not even your money that they're laundering you're laundering the equity of your shares because you've granted and signed consent say yes create another account against my legal fiction with another utr number and you can launder it twice then so as for limited liability, but at the same time, I'm going to go around and tell people about law, but I'm going to limit my liability as a pound. But I wouldn't trust you. Immediately, I would say, well, what are you doing? If you understood what it is that you're talking about, you would understand that you haven't got, you, you can't limit your liability because you, anything could happen. And you should acknowledge or know that if I'm teaching people about the law, then I have got unlimited indemnity as well because my share of the planet and its resources are stacked up over here for me to be able to discharge any charge of any liability that I cause anybody in this unlimited libelous. <laughs> you could be walking along the road and a rock coming at you in the head, though, you know what I mean? So, you know, we can't, it's like it's the fear. Creating companies is because we fear the uh the liability the responsibility that isn't why i did it no That's you did it because the government to. told you to so that you could get more benefit out of your slave token account didn't you i did it because <laughs> i wanted to be recognized as a company as, a, as opposed to a, a single just a normal little person my name if i got a name like reclaim the limited <coughs> it, Excuse it me. would um imply more credibility rather than less as you put it um, but I'm just wondering if it's what well, you're saying. I guess you're saying it's not compatible with the. Um, 
the moment. Just it doesn't matter. It, uh, it doesn't matter. This is, you know, we, we have to laugh at ourselves now and again and, and, be, and say, you know, all of those things that I thought really mattered, it doesn't matter. All of those things are secured inside that uh, register anyway. No more damage can be caused with them. Um, and especially if somebody like yourself, and I, you know, I, I know that you've got very good comprehension of all things common law, it, you have to raise your game now to this level of I'm not going to diminish myself to any man-made definition. Energy and matter in movement is the closest I'll come to try to define myself. And I'm the minister of that. So you can call me Minister Emma Ben. And when you get to that point, when you are Minister Emma Ben, you're living it, you're breathing it, you exhume it, it comes from you. And, and the response in this vibrational field responds accordingly, is all I can say. Um, so you don't need to the universe has got your back is what i'm saying so you don't need to go through life thinking oh god i better do this and limit my liabilities or i better do this so there's no, there's, you just need to be and you need to be free to be whatever it was that you came to be and it's not thinking that you know by having a legal fiction over there it means that i've limited my liabilities so somebody can't prosecute me for something that you know was just my opinion anyway really so well, I'm, I'm, I'm stating regarding this COVID that the, the COVID legislation is unreasonable and disproportionate and therefore unlawful because a response to a perceived threat has to be reasonable and um, proportionate. Yeah, in other words. Uh, okay, so then I, if you wrote that Sorry, to well, me, I'd, finish what I'm saying, please. I'd finish say me? what's your definition of reasonable? It depends what the circumstances are, but can I just finish what I'm saying? If somebody went and took that, those words and acted upon them and lost their business as a result, that's where my limited liability comes in, as I understand it. Because they, you know, they've acted on my words and I can be held liable for that. I, I you know, uh, that's your definition of, of what those words mean. To me, it means that somebody isn't prepared to say something but not take responsibility for it. That's, that's. Well, what, what responsibility am I expected to take for well, saying the words that is the truth, that the response is unreasonable and disproportionate and therefore unlawful? Yeah, what but what, I, I, I said it, I put it out on the internet again and again and again and again and again since April. I wouldn't know. you just say that that's true? Wouldn't you just say, Nick, that, that, it, 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 that it is unreasonable and disproportionate and end it there because that, that's the truth where you're, from where you're coming from? And therefore, you're that's not liable for anything. Well, that's what I will say, and that's what I do say. Yeah, yeah. I'm just, I'm just asking Elizabeth, right, where where the Imoven Trust stands with what I'm doing, and where I'd stand if I joined. Well, first um, of all, we won't be getting into discussion as a minister and then about what's reasonable in a system that hasn't got any definition of the same standard as what you would have as reasonable. Is It's not reasonable for us to even be considering whether we're going to have a debate about COVID being reasonable or not, or the legislation written by legal fictions as having any reasonable reason to it is unreasonable. So it's not, um, what I'm trying to say is that if you don't, what we don't want to do, Minister of Ven is not there for people. One guy drove like a maniac through the village a few months ago and, and the police got him and they showed his Emma Ven card and I just said, I'm not signing insurance for that. I'm not. So each and every single one of us stands surety to what it is that we, if we've got something to say, you speak from experience. If you're going to go to businesses and you're going to say to them, open up your business because of this and this and this, and this is what we did. And this is the evidence that we can prove to you that this cannot happen. If you use a rock in your shop or your business, or we spray you with this or or you have a COVID clean sticker in your window, we can only say that because we practiced it. So I, I don't, we don't need a, a legal fiction of any description to hide behind to limit our liabilities of saying the thing that we know is, tr is true because immediately it diminishes the value of what it is you're saying because it's like, 
I'm not really sure about this and somebody might try and prosecute me because uh, what I'm saying is if, if you know that what you're saying is true, then you don't need to limit your liabilities, do you? Well, I've been saying similar things for 40 years, as you know, and I've never had a problem so far. But um, I just thought it was a. I just I just felt like it was a wise thing to do to start a limited company, and I did. I registered, and believe it or not, if you look up the company, reclaim the law. If you were to do so, the number, the company number, has got nine 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 in it. I couldn't believe it when I saw it. Honestly, it's crazy. <laughs> but somebody's having a laugh. <laughs> Can I ask a question, which Love is to. kind of related to this? Yeah. Um, hi, uh, uh, Emma Van. I, um, thanks for sending me the link and I sent it to Nick because he said he, he was interested, um, reclaim the law, Nick, and he said that you sent him a, a link before, but he, he, he didn't know where it was. Um, yes, I, I, um, I understand to a limited degree what you're saying. I would consider myself to be a reasonably intelligent person, but I have found that I took 10 pages of notes when I was listening to you before and I still feel as if there's huge gaps in my sort of understanding of what you're saying. I can tell that you know what you're saying and I can tell that you you can join up all the dots but I feel like I'm playing a, a game of sort of um, a game where you're all you're sort of two or three moves ahead of me and I just can't quite catch up. Um, so for me, I would need something much simpler. And I've looked at your website and that's still a bit complicated for me. I feel like I need the sort of 101 version of the Universal Community uh, Law Trust. And I feel like other people that I know would also need that as well because they won't be able to understand it. It's just listening to some of your stories. You, you, you think on your feet, I can tell you've got, sounds like somebody's giggling in the background there. Um, you've got, um, you've got, because you've got, I can tell that you haven't got fear, you're, you're prepared to go through these situations, you've got integrity. But I, I feel like I, I don't want to pay my tax this year. Right. Let's, but I let's, don't let's, know that, that, so that's my question. It's like, I don't want to be part of this system. It makes me feel very emotional. I don't want to be keeping up this fraudulent system that takes us to war and everything else. Mm -hmm. I want to get out. But I feel like if I try to, I'm, I'm going to get hammered by the very system that I'm trying to get out of. And that actually, honestly, does fill me with fear, even though I'm you know, quite a brave person, I would consider. And, and I'm at the forefront of campaigns where I've, you know, been dialoguing with the police about stopping 5G. I've seen friends, a friend of mine getting arrested and taken away. Um, you know, it's just like, shit. You know, I feel like now I'm in this position. I don't want to give any more energy to the system, but I'm afraid probably to take the action that's needed to extricate myself from it. And that's why it's in those little steps. Um, it would be un, uh, unethical of me to hold any information back. So it, there is everything. Everything about the fraud uh, regarding the legal fiction. In these little steps that you take, it's what I said to people joining us, and the first thing that they said was, want to buy a house? How do I buy a house? Hang on a minute. It's not going to make any difference to you if I explain this to you now about buying a house, because you haven't put the steps in place to give your mind some standing. So that's why you start off with the little things, with your electricity, the gas, the water, those things that, it, and that you're paying anyway. And if it doesn't work then you can always go back to being a debt slave and pay them can't you i've said that all along to everybody if what i'm saying isn't true nothing's going to change except that you're just going to go back and pay them what you were already going to pay them so you at this point you haven't lost anything now when minister and Ven is used as your legal fiction then that puts uh, a 
um, well, it, it puts a barrier up against them being able to come at you in any way because there is this particular requirement of contract. So uh, yeah. as long as you aren't obviously uh, violent or you know, you're not aggressive and you very politely, somebody stops you and they say, well, we want your identity. Give it to them. It's Minister M. Venn. How can I help you? Mm. There's no confrontation there. They look at that and they go, well, we don't recognize that. Well, that's all I've got. Yeah. Now the word cognize is used in the courts or it was, and, and a judge in a particular case just simply said, we cannot cognize this cognize so you can't compute it it doesn't exist in our system we have no jurisdiction of it we've got no way to define it we don't know what it is so how do we do anything with it we have a live one here is what they refer to you as however long that lasts is down to however long it is that you've got that resolve in that mindset and even if you do think oh god no, okay I'm too much for me at the moment i'm going to give my legal fiction you do it with all your rights reserved you're under duress and okay you feel crap because you did it and and the more that you practice being minister of event the less obviously you're practicing being the vatican debt slave even if mm. you go and, and jump back in because he's you know, I've got to my limit. Now, the other thing is if you get to the limit of your knowledge, all you have to say is, look, I'm under non-disclosure. I have to check with my trust and I'll get back to you. Or let, you know, speak to my trust and ask them to disclose the information on my behalf because I'm under non-disclosure. The reason why non-disclosure works so well is because all their system is built on the back of non-disclosure. So if they're going to put you in a position, just imagine that document that you read again on, in your mind now, that the standing of the secured party st status, if it has no standing, it has no value, then all secured parties have become unsecured. If a non-disclosure has no value, then all non-disclosures are there to be breached, including the Official Secrets Act. The Wessex family first. You've, you've kind of lost me there, right. just because I don't understand those terms enough. You know, right. I understood what you said. I'm on the non-disclosure. I'll have to speak to my trust and get back to you. That I understood. Right. But then you just, then you said something about a secured party, and I didn't yeah. understand what you meant by that. I don't know what a secured party is. It's not a term that I've ever heard of before. Um, well, have you ever had a mortgage? No. Have you ever had a bank loan? No. Well, yes, a long time ago. Okay. So if it was... I'm in a I'm in a lucky position where I've, you know, I've been self-employed. I I have I have you know I have money in the bank. I I I I'm I'm not in a position where I have to, um, like you say on your website, sell my debt or something. I'm you know. Maybe I'm unusual. <laughs> I no, I'm just I'm just terrified of having a mortgage or any of those things. You're not unusual. It's you've been a very good Vatican debt slave and paid for everything in cash. Hmm. Instead of being a good Vatican debt slave and allowing them to launder your credit file. Either way, you <laughs> and you're putting your own slavery. But and that, uh, I paid for my own slavery. Today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but. Um, it is, you know, whichever way we dress it up. Secured party, let's look at that definition. The mortgage, if I go and I, if I borrow money, um, I have it secured on something, let's say a car. So I go and I get a, a loan for a car or a HP, and the loan is actually secured on the right of use of the car um, or your house, if it's a mortgage or whatever, it could be a boat if you bought a boat with it, whatever. So it's secured and unsecured. Unsecured creditors haven't secured their loan on anything, any collateral. Secured creditors have secured their lending on collateral. Mm. So as a secured party creditor, you are now in the position where you should have been all this time, you should have always been the secured party creditor 
to HM government because that was the company you were crediting for your tax. But because yep. you used it sort of lost me again, just simply because my mind, I'm a writer and an artist, and I, I've never had any kind of background in any of this stuff. So I, I'm just, don't worry, don't worry if you can't explain to me, because that's what I mean about the 101 version. I, I probably won't understand even if you kept repeating those words, because I'd have to go away. So what the, does the, the 101 look like in your definition? Um, I would literally need to have like a, um, what do you call it, like a dictionary or like a, to tell, to explain to me what all those words were. I mean, maybe I could do that because I've written everything down. So I've written down secured party in your definition of it. I'd need to write down what an unsecured creditor is. I'd need to write down what a secured loan is and have a definition of it. I'd need to, I don't, although I've heard the word collateral, I don't totally understand it in practice. Does that make sense? So a collateral for a loan is something that you have. So I can understand that you'd have your house set against your loan so that if you couldn't pay your loan, the house would have to be taken away. That I do understand. But it's literally, it's just like having a definition of all these things, these words, which for you, I, because of the work that you've done, you probably have them in your mind. It's like your language currency, whereas mine is a complete, I, if you, I practice homeopathy, so I could explain homeopathy to people. And I'm a teacher of homeopathy and I could use that as credit. Um, but I would have, to, I would understand all those words where some people wouldn't even know what homeopathy is. I could explain to them it's like treating life, it's an energy medicine. Um, does that make sense? It's like I have a completely different vocabulary to you. You don't, that's a limiting belief. Um, I okay, well, I've learned, I can learn your vocabulary. Of course you can, but what, what yeah. is better is if you practice the vocabulary so it becomes your own definition. So. Yeah. When, when you talk about being secured part of credit, it means something, otherwise they're just empty words and they've got no value to them. So it is, you know, important that you get to that point. But like Karen and Morphic Residence has sent the message there, it is set out like it is to take the steps one by one to 10. And you, the, you know, we're, there's absolutely no way that I would even consider taking somebody through step 10 if they hadn't done step one to nine first. Okay, that's interesting. You see, I just read those steps on the website, but I, I don't think I understood that you took them sort of one by one, if that yeah. makes sense. Okay, well, I'll put a little, I'll take that on board. I'll put a little sentence up there to, you know, do step one f first. I didn't know that I needed to. <laughs> in, but because but that, that's, I, what's, what's maybe obvious, I'm always like this with things. What's maybe obvious for certain people just isn't obvious for me. And I'm the kind of person that I'll admit it's not obvious. That's great that you do. And, and otherwise, we, you know, uh it makes it easier to comprehend what you where you're at <laughs> so let's let's go hand in hand step one two through to ten and then when you've got those steps done you will have already discharged your tax bill i assure well, you of that okay thank you you're welcome so, yeah, so it's where it says on your website we buy any debt See, I didn't know that that was relevant to me because I don't have a debt for you to buy, but I'd still need to go through those steps. Yeah, if you go onto the Universal Law Community Trust site homepage. Yes, I'm on that. Yeah. And I thought that that page wasn't relevant to me because it says, because at the top is the title underneath that beautiful picture of the mountains. It says, we buy any debt. But that's actually not something that I need. Well, maybe I do need somebody to do that, but it's not something that I have. Keep going down, love. Keep going down. Down, down, right to the bottom <laughs> of the homepage. There's loads more that you haven't looked at yet. Did you just shut okay. up at that point, go, we buy any debt? It's not for me. And yeah, 
because, because right. it says that at the top of the page, so I didn't know that it was relevant to me. Okay, love. Um, Emma Venn's just put one up. It's taken them six months of attending these calls for the process to percolate and right. transform my understanding. So, you know. Um, yes, I understand. I, 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 yeah, I suppose I get that. That, that I am the kind of person that if I can also help other people, I want to help them. And yeah. I'd be quite happy, you know, um, to, to help where I can, to help explain things to others, you know, once I understand it. Like you say, as you said yourself, I love what you said there. Practice the vocabulary so it has a meaning. And that makes total sense to me. Thank you. You're welcome. And, and all you need to really do uh, is create a Proton email address to begin that step one, which is also written on there, how to do that. Yes, I've got, I've got one already. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, you must have to get the link. Um, but I'm just looking through here, Kat, uh, Catherine. I think, did I already give you a kind of credit account number? I don't think so but that's not to say you haven't because i'm i'm behind in checking my email addresses i mean I, my email i i didn't without disclosing too much because we're recording is this are, are you uh, related to reform let's say uh yes right got you okay well i thought i recognized the voice now yeah. Uh, no, I haven't. It was it's Lucy that I wish you'd run to. So uh, let's put to let's put you in here, and uh, I'm going to allocate you one now, and then I'll send you over an assignment of consent. So you decide what it is that you want to start this off with: electricity bill, glass bill, water bill, uh, council time, yeah. and um, and we'll move through these steps together. Um, one by one and then you can speak to other people about right this is what step one looks like this is what it feels like this is why I'm doing it and this is what happened next that's interesting and I feel that I've just gone over to this universal utility and it's with somebody I know that I've signed up so would they, <laughs> they now get into trouble because I've suddenly become minister of Emma then and, and I'm but I suppose actually, as long as I've signed up under them, they probably still get whatever they get signing me up. You know, I don't know if anybody else does that. Whereas I used to have different utility companies for different things. No, what happens is, is Minister of Event moves into the occupation of your mind and the legal fiction that that slave name moves out. You retire from crediting that legal fiction. Great. And so then what happens is Minister of Maven is switches the supply, the supply goes into the name of Minister of Maven, and the supply from there is assigned to the free energy suppliers and you have kindness credit meters put on your house and you never pay your supply again. Great. Yeah, it's cool. That's step two. See? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> just had to get that out of the way and here we are at step two and then you're like wow i got all of the income that i had energy that i was converting into slave tokens now back in my household mm. what can i do with it well you can invest it in some organic seeds and grow organic veg in your garden i know you do already do don't yeah. you? so or you know create a sustainable school for example I'd love to do that. Yeah. so it, what it, we're really doing is taking all of those things that causes debt in our mind that stops us doing and being the things that we were doing came to be and do we it allows us to put that to one side and and really then just create what it is that we really came to create. Sounds wonderful. Yeah. I, I, I am generally, I think I have a high level of fear. You know, that's, um, although I think I probably don't, I actually do. Um, just to even join this call, I had. I, I, listening to you, Catherine, I would just say from my degree in psychology uh, that you. <laughs> 
think that you should be scared of something and it's new to you that you're not and you're teetering at the edge of this precipice and saying i should be scared but i'm going to do this anyway but I, you know i've got to check myself because i've always checked myself and now I'm, I'm like okay what am i checking myself against i've got no definition <laughs> of these things. i'm just and that's it at that point launch yourself off and, and because everything I, I was said this in my book um the unknown we've been living it all our lives and we think that we know something we know nothing about anything worth knowing about we know everything about nothing which is this legal fiction system <laughs> and and then we're like oh God, no, i'm really scared of the unknown oh bloody hell how did you get up yesterday the day before the week before 10 years ago if we were scared of the unknown and it mattered it doesn't matter <laughs> That's very funny. <laughs> oh, I'm glad. I'm glad that you're laughing. Have you got in a good question? way? Yeah, and why? Only take it in a good way, even if you know, it's, uh, even yeah. if you didn't mean it in a good way, I've taken it like that. So hey, it's <laughs> it's uh, and it, it does everything. It, you don't let matter matter. We make take things, take take even just perceptions or people's uh, uh, responses and we make it into matter. Yes. So do, do I want to make this thing into matter anymore? No, it doesn't matter. And it helps you <laughs> filter through all of that that you thought may, you know, mattered if somebody laughed at me. No, I love it. I love it when they're standing in the street and their mouths dropped open because we're all dancing and singing and spraying people with coronavirus antidote. <laughs> you know, I love it. <laughs> so it's uh, it, it's if we could just laugh at each other and ourselves a bit more, I think we'd be through this uh, much quicker. And, yeah, I agree. Mm. Well, I think COVID is. I mean, I think it's like a, it's the only. I've said it's the only pantomime we're getting this Christmas, and actually, it can be a very funny one if you see it. Oh, well, I I want my money back if that's the case, because if this, <laughs> uh, I mean, uh, it's really a sure. It's a, a really sad show. If I, so as far as the acting goes, you know, it's not and the continuity. Uh, it's just it's not credible and i'm just I, i'm not definitely not coming from back from matinee that's for sure <laughs> <Big> boo. <laughs> <Big boo. laughs> oh i'm going to sue the script writer that's it we need to find who wrote that bloody script because it's uh it's not meeting the grade that it needs no, i agree um, Terrible. so <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> huh. Have we got any more questions? You've got a uh, minister of events, Sweden's got his hand up. Hello. Hello. I love, how are you? Yeah, not bad, how are you? Very good, actually, yeah, thanks. Good, good. Yeah, uh, just a quick question. I had, uh, um, the company I do work for here handed me this big pile of paperwork um, just before Christmas and said, oh, They've changed the law here. I'm like, oh, have they? <laughs> yeah, you have to have a Swedish company now to work here. I'm like, I think I've got another idea. Do you, do you think it would make sense to put a, an energy exchange agreement together through the trust? Is that possible? <laughs> and uh, just do it, do it with, uh, so I pay the government rocks. I'm quite up for that. Exactly. Hooray. This is the best present, yeah. Yes. Yeah. I I want you to do this for a long time, and now the universe has done it for you. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Yeah. This is all you have to do. You just you convert your accounting into a second ledger book. So here I've got my ten thousand cups of coffee sold for rocks, and yeah. and here is the one that I collected the slave tokens in before I turned it into the rock. Okay. So, okay. Uh, if you just send me, uh, do you get a, do you invoice the company? Yeah, I send invoices. Yeah, I do. Okay, yeah. send me a copy of one of your latest invoices and I'll convert it into kindness credits for you and send it back and you can see how easy it is. And done it with Phil. 
as well. Too easy. Lovely jubbly. Yeah, and uh, yeah, so I mean, I'll just come up with, uh, I can probably write out my own uh, energy exchange agreement. I'm, uh, I'm probably the most productive there. I don't think they want to get rid of me. <laughs> so I think they'll buy it. But uh, yeah, yeah, that's going to be, I'll just, like you say, I'll just, I'll just bill them in kindness credits and tell, tell them how, how much each kindness credit costs. Could, if you could talk us through, uh, perhaps offline about about the ledgers again just get the get so i can get that clear in my head yeah, it's, then, uh, it's just divided by eight so if if i'm invoicing somebody and i want them to give me eight thousand slave tokens i'm invoicing them for one thousand kindness credits that's in in uh, slave tokens pound sterling is that right yeah any that slave tokens are slave tokens and they're all being oh. The reason why it's divided by eight is because they're creating slave tokens, the, the, the fictional fiat debt, 10 to the power of 10. They use the eight, the hypothetical eight, and then the one that you use with the cash um, and the receipt. Okay. So when you, and you, you, you owe the card, so if you pay by card, you'll get two receipts. They take, you've seen that, when you pay by card. No, I've not seen that, no. When you, no. when you pay by card, you get a receipt, don't you, out of the machine? And there was another yeah. one that goes into the till. Oh, yeah, that's right, yeah, yeah. So that's the two plus the eight okay. that's going on in the background creates the ten, ten to the power of ten. We uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. That stops. That's what we stop <coughs> by using kindness credits. Now, because you've uh, discharged all of your liabilities, you'll be able to offer your services, or not you particularly in your situation that you're in at the moment, because I know that you're building your house and doing yeah. other things. Now, the uh, people who are discharged all of their liabilities, um, you don't have to charge the same amount anymore, do you? Because you haven't got a debt to pass on to somebody. So your price comes down, it makes you more competitive in the market, more people come to okay. you and afford you. And yeah, yeah. You, get more, you, you get more clients. So yeah. you know, I haven't come up with one objection to kindness credits yet as a, as, a, as a reason not to do it, other than nobody's going to understand it. Well, they're not going to understand it because you haven't explained it to them. You haven't explained it to them because you never put a rock in your hand and gave it to them. And what I would do, Mark, is I'd, I'd take a rock with me when they pay me. Oh, I'm yeah. voicing them and say, right, okay, I, I know you haven't got any, but kindness credit, so I'm giving you one of mine. Um, and I need you to give me this back when you pay me. The rock, yeah? Yeah, I want that rock back when you pay me, because that's really what my... My books are going to look like that. Going to that. Yes, okay, slave tokens is coming to an account in fiat currency, but I converted it into one rock or 10 or whatever it is. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. That's good. Thank you very much for that. And if you could go through, obviously, I've uh, I sent all the, the letters out to electric companies and all the rest of it. You said there was some, there's some sort of letter you, you said. You, you did mention it earlier, but I didn't quite uh, comprehend it. Uh, about the uh... oh dear offer of settlement yes offer of settlement yeah okay so where you, that's that's really what we're doing uh, now at this level we're not offering we're not saying show us your contracts and we'll pay you because we know they haven't got a contract because we haven't yeah we've gone past that yeah. yeah so we're taking the charge that they're trying to lay as credit and yeah. charging it against the debt that they owe the community okay so how do you do that exactly do you have any uh, on the, on the web, for that? yeah on, on the facebook group in files you'll see they've got the restoration uh, big blue asset management uh, settlement offer and you just put the account number in there and the legal fiction that it was addressed to and the amount okay. they're trying to extort from you and uh, send them that. And whenever you read through it, you'll realize what it is that's being said. That's this uh, a debt equity swap that's taken place really. And we kindly say hello to your new creditor. 
<laughs> Very good. Can, can you go through that again? Please? It's on the big blue. It's, it's big blue. Settlement offer. Settlement offer. Yeah. Cool. I'll get a couple of those printed off tomorrow. Wonderful. Okay. That was everything, I think. Great. For now. <laughs> nice to hear you. I've heard from you for a while. I beg your pardon. Oh, it's nice to hear from you. We haven't heard from you for a while. No, it's been a while. I've been uh, up to my ears with the house. We had to move out, then we didn't. So I was, uh, yeah, all the hours at the house trying to get it livable. Still nowhere near. <laughs> so we've got a little bit, little bit extra time now. So it's, uh, it's not, not so much of a panic now. I just I, want to get in, you know. Are you in the new house then? No, no. No, goodness, no, no. I say I don't I don't do loans or anything you know so it's uh it's just doing it a little bit at a time you know as you can with what we can afford at the moment so uh but yeah it's coming on slowly but surely yeah. I'm doing everything myself doing all the wiring plumbing uh joinery uh gyps work I'm doing everything myself so it's and there's only one of me you know yeah so yeah so that but the, obviously there were a little bit of help so that now you have that income coming in that you have yeah. been having to give to the parasites exactly right <laughs> good stuff exactly right all good i'll, I'll let someone else ask some questions <laughs> good okay. talking to you Thank you. Okay, cool. okay. Uh, bye for now Catherine, have you still got your hand up or is it just me? Oh, sorry. No, I forgot to put it down. I'm not sure that I know how to do that. Hang on. I've, I've, uh... Okay, cool. Um, and then we've I... got Nick again. Nick, have you got another question? Yes, thank you. Um, I've sorry. got the uh, website and the form at the bottom. I've put my name and I've put my Proton mail address. Yeah. It says add account number assigning. Is that my birth certificate number? It depends. It could be your electricity bill, council tax. It could be that company name with the liability limited company next to it. It could be your driving license, your passport number, um, what else? Council tax, water, debt. It's Everything. any number assigned to my name. Yeah. That identifies me. Yeah. All right. I've got my birth certificate in front of me, and it's got. A number at the bottom left hand corner is that the one with some any, letters it's any my love any number on there that is associated with anything that you want to stop crediting might have to write that on the on the website if it's not clear well i haven't read all the small print i'm just doing it because i'm online with you now and i thought i'd ask you there isn't a small print it's big fat letters in bold <laughs> it's, quite, it's quite small on my screen <laughs> <laughs> um, Put your glasses on. <laughs> got my glasses on. <laughs> I wouldn't be able to read it at all without them. <laughs> um, but I don't. Any number. So it means means it's a number associated with me and with the company that I'm trying to stop them taking my money off me. Yeah, and I mean it could even be your fridge number. If you bought your fridge with your card, that fridge serial number is attached to you. Did you know that? I didn't know that, but it makes sense. Yeah. Okay, so um, any number. And then it says, assign my consent, create kindness credit account, get more info. What does that, what do I do there? If that you just put in there, assign my consent, or, or what is it that you want to do? I want to assign my consent of the accounts that I've just attached in the other boxes. Uh, I want a kindness credit account, don't really know what's going on. Uh, I want to find out more. Well, I'll leave all the, all the above. <laughs> no, name of corporation harassing me, none at present. The uh, Crown Corporation there. is always harassing you. <laughs> well, they might start soon because the tax year is coming up. They're going to try and get me to pay tax, I expect. But I, I don't owe them anything, so I don't know if they will or not. But um, uh, what shall I put Crown Corporation in there then? Yeah. Uh, sorry, I've got to put them in there just a second. I'm out there trying to escort none at present.
well, except for VAT on everything I buy. Contact details of company. HMGov. Sorry, say that again. I was still on mute. Sorry. Um, I'll put. <coughs> I'm still not sure which number to put in there. <coughs> um, they're not trying to get anything out of me at the moment. Contact details of company. I'll put Crown Corporation. So, HM Government? Yeah. The Vatican. I had an idea of, a, of an action to, uh, I, I mean, basically, we all know the government's criminal and we know that it's criminal to pay someone to commit crime knowingly and we know that so therefore all of us here know that we're all paying tax unlawfully and we're doing it knowingly which is itself criminally so we could all citizens arrest each other for the heinous crime of knowingly paying tax to a criminal government you can like arrest yourself that would be really funny arrest yourself go and take yourself to the police station with some handcuffs on and say right well, i've come to hand myself in I've been a very naughty debt slave and I don't know what to do about it. So I thought I'd come here and, and confess my terrible sins. I've been committing fraud upon my soul ever since I was born. And I need you to prosecute me. <laughs> well, I was thinking of a mutual citizen's arrest of a whole lot of people outside, outside Parliament Square. Who would all, you know what? Say, I, I've got a beautiful vision of everybody going and throwing their birth certificates over the fence at Downing Street, and I think about it all the time. Yeah. I really well, if everyone wants to citizens arrest each other, they'd all be upholding the law. So, and if they arrested us, they'd have to arrest us for upholding the law. <laughs> yeah. I think it would be a very funny thing to see. I would like to see it. I've been saying it for years. but um, My house number and postcode, that's what the farm where I live. Um, for big switch purposes, what's big switch? Big switch is where we switch your energy suppliers over so that you end up with the free energy meters on your house. I live in a van, so it doesn't really apply to me. Um, I'm, I, I basically, I do a bit of work for the farmer in return for my electric, but I don't use much electric. Well, you can speak to, you, speak to the farmer then and help him. No, yeah, you'd, you'd get me locked up by men in white coats if I did that. <laughs> <laughs> what would it, if you told him that if instead of been paying your ground rent or whatever, I'm going to discharge all of your electricity. So me being here it's just to show it to you for all of your debt, I think he'd put his arms on you and give you a big kiss. I don't want to encourage that sort of behaviour. <laughs> <laughs> not, not from him. <laughs> but um, uh, I'm, I'm unsure what to do here. I, it might sound simple to you, but I'm not sure. Um, and it says, any other comments? I've put my website and it won't accept it. It says there's an app missing out of the week email address, but I'll, I'll just put, I'll just put reclaimalaw.org and that will be work. I'll just send it. But it still wants my... Um, okay, I'm going to stop asking questions and let someone else. Is there anyone else who wants to ask questions? No, have you put, just press send and make sure the website's working because if it doesn't, Wix are obviously Israeli owned and I've used Wix because it's really simple. Um, and I don't really care if anybody sees what it is that we've got is going on anyway because we're all projecting this, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, what they have done is they try to be inconvenience our communications. And that's the only thing they can do now. Sometimes people press that button and it doesn't send. If that is the case, all you need to do is copy the information that you've just put in those boxes onto an email and send it to kindnesscredits at protonmail.com and we'll get it. And then immediately you've got step one done, you've assigned your consent and you get an assignment of consent and all your paperwork within the next few days back to you as a welcome pack. And off you go, then you serve those on the relevant parties, whoever it is that you think needs noticing. 
and keep the receipt of the proof of postage. And there you already at step three now. Kindness credit at protonmail.com. Yeah, kindness credits. Uh, with credits, yeah, I've got it. I've got, the, I've got an email from you before. Um, in the subject line, do I put join or something like that? Yeah, whatever you want. You can put hello, Looney. <laughs> whatever you like. <laughs> I need more guidance. I might, I'm a been an activist on the common law for 40 years you know but uh, I'm still finding myself in deep water here I don't, know, I don't understand what's going on but I'm going to trust and see what happens that's it that's all that's all you need to do and if and it, what you're actually doing is you're building a trust in yourself and so I was saying at the beginning that people were calling me and saying you know that it says on this document that going to prosecute we'll get prosecuted if we use this name are you going to prosecute us no, you're going to prosecute yourself. But it says here this trust is going to prosecute you. Now imagine you're sitting in the police station and you're giving them that piece of paper. And they're like, all right, so why won't you tell us your name? Well, my name's under non-disclosure. I'll be prosecuted if I use it. I wouldn't even say that. I'd just say, look, it's written on the paper. Let the paper do the talking. Because the minute that you speak, that's contract. You've lost me. When you speak, it's contract. That piece of paper, the, on the website, under Undocumente, you can see the copy of the paper that you're gonna get. The only thing that's gonna change on there is the information, the name and the account number. Anybody can, at any time, up until now and from now on, can go on there and download any of those copies and edit them themselves. This is because it is not a trust that you are creating that is separate from you that I'm in some kind of control of. It is you controlling your own trust. And so if you don't do it right, that's, you know, you've nobody to blame except yourself. So we don't need blameless liability because it's all ours. I'm fully liable for everything that I create in my life as you are and as you are in your soul. Um, what, there's a question just popped up in the box. What's that? The assignments will be paid when the debtor provides a contract pulse it's already been paid for. What was that to? Emma Van. Huh? Everybody called Emma Van. Oh, it's great. That was a question, I think, from Andrew about oh. when the assignments will be paid. What assignments? Andrew, have you got a question? Sorry, it's just I've got a, a, a couple of bills that need paying, i.e. a credit card bill that's in the next couple of days that I've, I've missed it and it's on a direct debit and it's getting taken out in the next couple of days but I could cancel the payment down. Um, do I put the, the, the credit card on there? Yes, you, if you go to the document that you've already got, now what we want you to do, if you've already had an assignment of consent, sit and look at it and, and edit any other ones. Now, because some people don't feel comfortable about sending an actual insurance number over, I get that, and it's fine, it doesn't matter, it's just more work for you guys because you have to minister yourself. So if you send me two or three different account numbers or one account number is your council tax or you've just put your house number postcode in there then i haven't got any account numbers to put in you have to do it so you'll just get back an assignment of consent with the legal fiction in there and you'll have to edit it and add the account numbers accordingly now if you do send over the national insurance account number that account number is the primary trust fund feeding account and in everything comes from that anyway you use it to create other accounts with so um, you can edit these documents yourselves. Um, and like I just said, you can go on the website. You don't need to do an assignment of consent into trust. You can open your own ledger book, draw lines on it, columns with the date, the, what it was, the deed that you're recording, was an assignment of an electricity bill or a credit card bill, what was the company name, write in the next column, 
how, what was the amount in the next column, what was the date that you sent notice, you can write the receipt number or the tracking number in the next column in the date. You, that's you keeping the ledger rolls. So then you don't need to keep sending this information to me. It is good to have it stored elsewhere as well and shared amongst others so that, you know, if you ever got in a position where you needed somebody to second the deed that you've done, you've got Minister and Ven on the other end of the phone um, or your community hub facilitator and you've given them a copy of your ledger book so they can say, right, yeah, okay, well, I'm looking at the ledger book for that particular family trust and you were served an assignment of consent on such and such a day. I can see that the date was whatever because you're looking at the information. And um, so what is it that you want? Oh, why are you attempting to try to create joinder with the previous creditor of this account who's now retired? Why are you not corresponding with me as Minister of Ven? I am the only party who has got the authority to act in any, of the, any and all matters. And I want to know where is your assignment of consent and authority to act? Because as secured party creditors to the corporation that licensed you to commit trade or commerce upon the land known as England, you need the license of us because all licenses have been revoked and you're secured collateral. And I haven't given you the right of use of my community's rights. And then whatever they say to you, well, well, you know, we're trying to find out about this account. Who's going to settle this account? Well, that's why you're speaking to me. I'm the only party who can settle this account, so I'll tell you what I'm going to do for you. I'm looking at the outstanding debt owed by HM government and all agencies thereof. You, what company is it? Andrew? Credit what's, card company. Dave, what's the name? Credit card company. What's the uh, name? Capital One. Capital One. So, Capital One is something to do with Lloyds, I believe, isn't it? Um, uh, is it Lloyds or HSBC? Um, yeah. Anyway, Capital One the latest is, is a trading legal entity. It hasn't, uh, it, it's obviously, it's incurred debts. It's, it's really a government that is dressed up as little companies or granted the right of use of people's accounts, credit files, to act as brokers, to then lay a claim against your trust so that the equity can be released in the form of their credit. Um, so that, and, and limited as to what you can have, depending on whether you've been a good debt slave or not. So Capital One have already got outstanding liabilities of in excess of 100 million with kindness credits as a community. And so I'm going, and you're asking my creditor uh, to cover a thousand slave tokens. So I'm going to take that thousand slave tokens claim. Had he paid it, it would have created a hundred thousand. And I'm going to be very kind and I'm going to discharge a hundred thousand off either Capital One's kindness credit account that's in debt, or I can deduct it from HM governments. Which would you prefer? Um, so, again, sorry. <laughs> Do you comprehend? Yeah. Have to live in. Yeah. That. Do you want to do some role Take play? The, the... Right. Cool. Yeah, we're losing your sound, Andrew. Yeah, I've got bad signal. <laughs> what did you say? Do the, the, the role play. Do you want to do some role play? Yes, if you, right. if so you can. I'm, I'm going to call you. I'm, I'm going to call you. Um, and I'm from Capital One, right? Or do you want to call me? Yes. And you'd be Capital One. Which do you want? 
Right, I'll, I'll call you. And who am I? Hello? Who am I? <laughs> Hello, legal fiction? <laughs> Who's calling? This is for one uh, credit card company. Um, we believe that you uh, have announced a debt that's due for payment. Uh, have We've you fallen for a collection. Is it possible to make a payment now? Have you established who it is that you just disclosed that very private information to? Or is it normal practice that you just call numbers and, and, and explain that this, somebody's got some debt somewhere? Do you want to start again? Right, yeah. Hello, this is, yeah. <laughs> this is Capital One. Um, could I speak to the, the legal fiction, please? Um, I'm sorry, uh, the legal fiction cannot speak. Um, I'm Minister of Event. How can I help you? Um, can you give me some form of ID, I, uh, uh, password for the account held by legal fiction? Well, I'm the minister, Emma Van, and I, I'm the liability holder of many accounts. Um, can you tell me what the account number is, please? Uh, 012345, um, the, the, the registered address of blah, blah. such and such and such and such down the lane. Okay. Um, okay. Um, I, 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 this, this, I can, I can disclose that information, um, but unfortunately, I don't know who you are. You're just a guy that's rang me up and said you're Capital One. How is it? How can I prove that that's who you are before I disclose such a sensitive piece of information to you? We 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 have your credit card account, um, and you show that you are. Due a payment that hasn't been received. How how can you um, how can you prove that's who you are? I'm a representative of Capital One. Pardon? The credit card company that you, you have, that you have a credit card with. Yeah, but I you could I could just call anybody up and say that, couldn't I? I have you got an assignment of consent from the Universal Law Community Trust? I'm not dealing with the university law community trust, I'm dealing with Joe Bloggs. Uh, well, unfortunately, the account has been assigned, and I know that you've received an assignment of consent because I'm looking at the receipt here on my screen. You were served with this on the 12th of December, and I've got a receipt of the signature. Would you like me to tell you who it was in your company that signed for it? I'm afraid I don't have that information in front of me. Mm, okay, so if you don't have that information in front of you, how can I be sure you really are Capital One? I can't. Good question. <laughs> I can't be sure that you. Are. No, I can't. And even if you I can't prove who I am, yeah. you can't exactly. That's what you're doing all the time back at them. They don't exist, right? They only exist if you contract and say, "Oh yeah, hi yeah, it's me." Hello, Capital One, yeah. It's me, the Vatican debt slave. How many slave tokens do you want to persecute from me today? Take them all. <laughs> you minister them then. You haven't granted the right of use of that legal fiction to anybody to use, let it be, be it the previous creditor or the, the halfway at the other end of the phone who's calling you from what he thinks is Capital One. Where's your assignment of consent, your authority to act? I haven't granted you the assignment of consent and you've been served with one that says that you haven't got one. And I know that you've been served with it because I'm looking at the receipt. Why? Because I'm Minister of Event. But more importantly, I am the predator of that account, now retired. And we did this in the court. This is hilarious. They're screaming, who are you? You can't speak. You've got no interest in this matter. Okay, thank you very much. I, I am... I'm here on behalf of the ones creditor of that account now retired. What have you retired from? Credit in it. Where do all your rights go? Poof, somewhere else.
If you've retired, credit in that legal fiction. That's all you ever need to know, any of you, that I have retired from credit in that legal fiction. Or the, another so, one. I sold, even though the... I sold my name. You can't sell your name. Why not? It's not yours. Well, what are you getting me to pay for it, though, then? So if, if, if you've got the likes of a, um, a contract with a mobile phone company, can we assign that consent over? Yeah, the mobile phone, the, the mobile phones, we did one here with Vodafone, it was hilarious, and I cocked it up because I was, uh, I was flexing my muscles too much. They, uh, because we went into the LEI numbers that were trading on people's LEI numbers inside uh, various places, we could see that the last time somebody had paid 66 euros, they taken, six, oh, Yorga, was it six, how much was it with Vodafone? Anyway, I ended up with the, this a colossal amount of credit. We said, don't you come to this particular account again until it's used 60,000, I think it was, slave tokens worth of credit for Vodafone. So they sent us this document saying that, and, the, and it said that you can use it for everything except international numbers. So I called them up and kicked off. <laughs> And they, 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 that was us refusing the offer of settlement. Um, this is in the early days when we first started doing this. And, and the other girls was like, I can't believe you just did that. And I was like, I would not need international numbers on it. And instead, we refused the offer of settlement and they, they didn't have to give us any credit. The account was just closed. Um, and they stopped allowing that legal fiction to be used to create other ones with. So... Uh, with the with the mobile phone ones, uh, at this level where we're restore where we're restoring the rights of the creditors, we need to create our own mobile telephone companies now to take the shares of the bandwidth and the spectrum that they're using to transmit on, and transmit in a frequency that heals instead of harms. Um, up to that point where we were ready to do that. They, they chop you, they, they, the mobile phone ones are the hardest ones to do, that's why I don't talk about them, because they, but with the amount of money that you've got that you haven't spent on your gas, your water and your electricity, if you want to carry on paying them, then until we have got to that level, that's your prerogative. But I do not recommend uh, severing the contract with your telephone because it's, um, it's the easiest one for them to disconnect. It's more like a privilege they put it down to than a, in their walk sense of, uh, there's, n there's nothing that you can really do about reconnecting it. Do you see what I mean? If they come and they chop your electricity off, you can just put another meter on. But it, because of the way that they work, until we get off our knees and go and restore the rights to British Telecom um, and the, all of the collateral thereof, then we're in the hands of these people, such as O2 and EE, trespassing on your spectrum. So uh, take some of those slave tokens you haven't given for the gas and the electricity and, and pay them is what I'm saying about your, your telephone bill. Unless you want to go through that procedure that, you know, we have got a procedure for, for you to do that, um, which is exactly the same procedure, it's a debt, but they may interfere with your other second mobile phone if you don't want to be cut off somewhere, is what I'm saying. It's easy, it's easy for them to, to intercept your supply. Right, so you can see that little bit of slavery is okay. Well, it's not okay, um, but while we've not got off our knees and got off our houses and got together and gone and restored the rights of our resources, then you're stuck with it, aren't you? The minute that you go down there, yes. you get them out of these buildings. Um, it's not, you know, none of it's okay. It's, somebody called me and said, is it all right? Yep. Is it all right if I, uh, I just want to use a little bit of my credit file? Can you clean it? so that I can use it to buy something with. 
um, read it today with somebody wanting to use their trust that they've had dangled to them um, to buy a house with. You don't need to buy anything because it's already yours. You just need to go and exercise the right of use of it and use it right. So, you know, it, the, we, we are going to get to a point where if everybody, if the only thing that people are enslaved in is the telephone, then, then straight away we'll get to that critical mass. You're going to be up and you're going to be right, okay, if I've done, if I've done these steps of electricity and I've created my own organisation for free energy supply, then I can do the same for everything else, can't I? I can do the same for the food, I can do the same. This is where I'm trying to get you to. So yeah, it's like yeah. a transition. What, darling? The transition. Got, yeah. yeah. It's, 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 and you're, you're like the initiator of a, of a big transition that um, hopefully more and more people will join in that transitional move and then that can create something new and different. And exactly. in between times, we're in, a, we're in a transitional period. That's it. That's why we still, you know, why we still have 50 cents in the shop for a coffee. For the people, for the people who are doing that five hours a week, they don't come and give me a rock. Or, you know, they just come and take whatever it is that they need. Yeah. Thank you very much. I've got to go now. Um, and um, it's been very, very interesting. Thank you very much for inviting me. And oh, so I'll uh, I mean, come back on and, and invite some other people, hopefully. Lovely. Um, thank you. Bye. Bye bye, love. Bye. Thanks for coming. Bye. Bye. Uh, one, any... one more question. Go on then. More. I've got, we, we have a, a, a timeshare in Grand Canaria and we pay the maintenance um, yearly. Could we put that on? Our, our discharge. Um, what company is it with? Uh, don't, don't, uh, two seconds, I'll tell you. Don't, hang on, um, don't tell me, don't tell me, write it in the box. Yeah. Write it in the oh, message yeah. box. <laughs> write, write, write it in there where, what is the name of the resort? I think you've told me this already. Um, the answer to your question is yes, you can discharge the maintenance. Um, depending on whose company it is though. Oh, is it really? You most certainly can, yes. You can. And do you know why you can? Okay. Because they owe me 77,000 slave tokens actually in commission. <laughs> <laughs> so you can actually, I'll, I'll, I will use that debt uh, and stand, and use, you could use that, um, that commission that they never paid me when I used to work for them. So they were. It's nice there. Okay. It is nice. We were supposed to be there at the beginning of December. Yeah, it's very nice though. So. We went across to um, Puerto Rico <coughs> and we were stopping in Puerto Rico uh, Grand Hotel at the top and basically it was like stopping at Butlins, um, very 1970s. So we won this scratch card and ended up going down and ended up, I, w I was working um, for a, a big oil company out in Australia to pay for the, our holiday um, while we were there. So I bought the timeshare and that, that was what the oil companies did for us. So we had a, we have a holiday there every year for the rest of our lives, as long as we get flights there. Um, so that's what we did. I just, we get get the bill through around about December time for the for the maintenance. And and what have you got? Two weeks in a two bed. A week in a two bed is it? Or two weeks? Uh, no, we, 
we we upgraded. We've got um, what we, we're on the point system. So I've got I've got I think it's about fifteen thousand points. So I've got I could, and that's it. The the, the newest one was at the, uh, the golf the golf resort. Emerald. The em emerald, emerald, and the emerald, both. Right. So um, when did that's you that's when did you buy this? Four years ago. No. Four. Start, start, four, yeah, four years ago. Oh, right, okay. It wasn't me that sold it to you then. <laughs> no, it, 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 it was, what was the name of the girl? From Cockney Girl? Karen, eh? Lorraine. 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 No, that's the girl that's living now. Anyway, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter the names of people because they're all for. She, she, she started out with the. She sorted this out with the smoke as well. <laughs> cool. Um, what? Um, what's that? Very nice. Look, let me have a look at Amphi because it, the thing is, when 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 I sell timeshare, you are actually buying a week in a box. It's the only thing that could sell fifty times over. Um, and um, I love timeshare because we're all timeshare and everything anyway and people think they own something so it's a really good way of explaining you don't own anything and this now obviously you just told me about points because so the maintenance fees on on your points how does that work good question um, because I don't know. We we just pay. Just pay. Across the board. Okay. Let's I off. Bought a week when we first went, and then upgraded to under the point system. Mm. What you actually did? You, you that means we can go up to. Yeah, but you had a tangible thing. You had a week in a box, in a, an apartment on a certain period between such and such a date and that had a, a point value once you put it into the exchange through RCI or II and um, and obviously you've, you've safeguarded the cost of your holidays forevermore um, and <laughs> they, when they took it onto points you, you have it's a non-tangible thing it's like cryptocurrency so you've gone from the rock to the points so you actually you, what am I paying maintenance on exactly? It, because so not only is timeshare, imagine Amphi Beach Club now with thousands, hundreds of apartments. Each one of those has got 50 weeks in there, 48, I think you can sell uh, legally. You can sell it 48 times. And you have to save some of them for exchanges. That then, so okay, I know that I've got 100 apartments, I can sell 40, let's call it 40 weeks times 100. That's 40,000, 40 weeks after 100, 4,000 weeks of accommodation. Then what we've got next in the next level is that all of those disappeared into points now. You buy more points, it gets you more exchange value inside the exchange network. And really that's all that Kinds Credits has done really, is the same principle we put you exchange in you put your energy in and you exchange whatever it is that you need anywhere in the world out so um but you your points i would be asking okay i bought some points I, what is it what these points actually rec represent that i am having to pay this amount of maintenance for because if if these the apartments have been sold 40 times how many times is it really that they've been sold? So how many, how many, in each apartment, is, have you got people paying maintenance? That's the infinite amounts. So if I turn around to you, so uh, your maintenance fee is 500 pound a year, and I could only say that's 40 people in each apartment. Now I can say it's an unlimited amount because it's however many points it is that, come, that I'm, now, I'm now charging you maintenance off not charging you the maintenance of an actual brick built building. And this is virtual reality, yeah. virtual real estate and real estate. Yeah, that's, that's, 
Basically, yes. So let's have a look at your contracts and see what we can do with that. This is my answer to your question. Okie dokie. All right, and then we know what we're saying. Yeah. I'll, uh, I'll get that set up. All right, look. Now, Nikki, you've got your hand up. Yes. I've literally just started a a business like a connection business something like airbnb uh, for coaches and um and for mentors now because i've just initiated this process what is the uh, what what do i then do now with that business that i've started i haven't registered it yet or anything so don't register it is the answer don't register it uh, Pardon? sorry I'll just shut my door. Hang on. Don't register it, is my answer to your question. And you convert it into kindness credits. Um, and the, it, I have to know the mechanism of it. That's all I need to know. Um, are, you, are you charging people to go on to your network? Are you charging commission of the exchanges that you do? How, are you, is it free? So they'll pay for the access so the clients won't pay but the coaches will why are you charging you're capitalizing on, on an exchange it's like me saying right okay i've created kinds of credits and everybody who puts anything up there i want a percentage of what it is that you do i'm i'm a capitalist at that point what, okay why so why do you need to do that so this is that that's what i'm saying because i initiated that process before i knew about this one so in in doing it the right way i'm essentially asking how do i then go about it because i've started it with one purpose in mind now having a better understanding of life in its entirety um it's not it's not naturally right so i'm saying how do i then go about doing this because that was the initial intentions in my mind for the for the app so now i'm like i'm stuck i've paid a lot of money to make that app and the website and stuff like that so how do i then what have you got an app on the website that does exchanges using the using the an exchange for somebody making the offer and somebody making the exchange is that what you're saying yeah, so it's, it's on the legal, the legal, the, 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 the illegal system. It's on that mentality. So uh, the app was initiated to sort of connect people. There was a lot of people coming to me about wanting to find coaches um, worldwide. Mm -hmm. And in so doing, I just created that database for people to find coaches, mentor, whatever it is that you're looking for. So now that we have this conversion of kindness credit, how do I then initiate that into the kindness credit system as opposed to that system? What, you know, so I'm, I'm just... We just integrate your, what you've got there into the kindness credits, into your kindness credit account, and you grant the right of use of all of that app to the people who use kindness credits and they can you all okay. coaches and all of your mentors can come on there and on that platform still but do it through kindness credits which lifts all of their businesses into private enterprises private affairs super that's fine so uh that's fine that's fine why do you want to go through that, Nick? Because I think that you that you bringing a real benefit to people here as well. Um, that you yeah. give the five hours right of use of that as your exchange for my five hours with you. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Because as I said, it's my. <laughs> I'm really excited. It's my 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 first time. You know, as I said, you know, there was someone that I was anticipating, but I had a little cry and I said, "God, I need you now," and he just kind of lead me to you. And you have no idea. My heart is so soft for you because <laughs> you are just doing this um, relentlessly three days a week and other times you talk to people on the phone and you're giving so much positive energy out there. I just, I commend you, man. I take my hat off. So I'm like, I'm like, um, 
whatever you say I'll do because I know you know what you're talking about and I really one of the things that um I'm really I'm really I'm a big believer in God and one of the things that I've gotten from this whole thing is that he was saying kindness it pays to be kind and what I've gone through a lot of unkindness unnecessarily unkindness and I took it I literally I realized that it was for a purpose I didn't know what purpose it was for and I just took it because of my maturity like I understood the greater essence my soul did my physically I didn't I couldn't I couldn't correlate the two but now I'm understanding that kindness really really pays when it's you know time so I'm I just take my hat off to you I'm just saying that as an additional thing thank you very much oh, thank you it's very nice to hear that thank you you're welcome I think you're lovely. I really love having a chat with you like, the other day. I was like, ah, yeah, there's this crazy woman just like, oh, she's in the right room now. Here we go. Um, so, yeah, I said, and I, you know, now I get a better picture of what it is that you've been trying to do yourself there. Um, yeah. and, and we can really help everybody with what you've already done. Um, and, you know, it's lovely to have people like yourself coming on board and, and just being kind you know here you go this is what I was doing and and have the the what I don't know how to def, def, define this but the ability to be able to say do you know what I was rattling away down that avenue but health leather going yes this is this, this, this and then suddenly the universe went whoop hang on a minute yeah. and you yeah. looked and you bothered to look and you didn't come with your presumptions yeah. you didn't come with your hypothesis you just and it was such, been lovely talking with you um and I think you've put i feel like a duracell bunny you've put the batteries back in my back because for me i'm such an activist like for because i face so much um i'm, I'm always for the underdog i'm always rooting for the underdog any situation if if i don't fight for myself it's not because i can't it's because i realize it's useless but if i see it being done to somebody else like i'm i'm very very cutthroat when it comes on to that i, I don't like injustice any at all so so, you know, I was laying dormant for a while because I'm like, I feel hopeless. I feel helpless. I know there is a greater thing, but I have yet to find it. And I'm like, I had to have a real good talk with my, my source provider. <laughs> I'm like, come on now. We, I need you. I need you. I know that there's something else out there. I need you. And literally as I said, just going through. So it's beautiful, you know, having that chat with you and I just can't wait to go through the process now and just to do everything naturally. Wonderful. It's really awesome. We were in tears on the phone where we were like, <laughs> because it was really lovely. Um, and this is what I'm saying of it, you know, you've got, this is the like-minded that we're talking about, a kind-minded uh, people that are thinking about other people first uh, how can I help somebody else out of the situation that I see them in you know I'm not going to just stand by and, uh, and watch my brothers and sisters being persecuted for profit um, and you know this the, the, the universe responds with I've said send me the people who are going to make this happen here you all are you know so yeah so, oh, has anybody else got any more questions? I can go and have a cup of tea now. Yeah, yeah, I've got a question. Hi, darling. Uh, where would I find a recording of this amazing meeting, which has given me so much fun and so much <laughs> education? I just, and... <laughs> just reading the messages there. It's what, what we what bit we laughing about about the oh, oh bit. I mean, we've, we've, <laughs> I've got two people here with me, and we've just been curled up laughing at all the. Uh, it's so brilliant. It's uh, it, I think what were we laughing at? Um, about the, the idea of the, the millions of points on the timeshare and all that. That was wonderful. Yes. <laughs> We've just been laughing and laughing, and it's brilliant. And I'm learning so much. Thank you. 
You're very welcome. It's really great doing it, you know. Uh, and so we're going to, I'll sign off. Uh, and you can find this on the uh, YouTube. Okay, YouTube, lovely. All right. Beautiful. Thanks very Enjoy much, Judy. Your tea. Enjoy your tea and thanks for a brilliant evening. Really enjoyed it. It's been lovely being with you all. Thanks a lot for coming. Enjoy See your tea. Thanks. Thanks, Liz. That's Thank it. you so much. That's enough. Bye.